This is Football Focus Weekly with CFI, Charlotte Football Insiders. Starring the pet man, Matt Morrow, owner and founder of CFI. With him, we have Cherie Glenn, our lead reporter, knocking out interviews, going all over the place, just being the queen of CFI. We have Brandon Black, the man behind the camera, the producer, and our photographer does a great shot getting those shots every week. We have with us assistant West Charlotte football coach Brandon Billups. Very energetic young man. Former head coach at Central Bears and East Rowan High Schools, Kenneth McClamrock. One of our big football experts. And then last but certainly not least, we have Josh Kroll, former Christ the King head coach, former offense coordinator at multiple schools. And we are Football Focus Weekly. All right. Good evening, everyone. I am the pet man, Matt Morrow, and this is Football Focus Weekly. Uh, We've got a big, big show tonight, big Southwestern 4A focus tonight. Uh, We're going to lead off with um, a great head coach, Scott Chadwick at Myers Park High School. Uh, We're going to talk to him a little bit about um, how things are going over there. Uh, Then uh, after that, we're going to have Orlando Gray, Rocky River head coach, um, really passionate, energetic um, leader of men. Um, And then after that, we'll have Brian Hales, uh, Butler Bulldogs head coach, and we'll catch up with him and see how things are going in uh, Matthews. Uh, And then we'll highlight all of our um, preseason all-conference players, and we'll talk a little bit about the Southwestern 4A, give our predictions for the conference. Um, And then, of course, we got to throw in sound off as well. Um, I know the guys um, have a lot of energy (laughs) to sound off on tonight. So uh, without further ado, we're going to bring on Myers Park head coach Scott Chadwick here with us. How you doing tonight, Coach? Matt, how you doing? Appreciate you having me. I am. I'm doing great. I'm doing great, man. I appreciate you coming on. Um, We're going to jump right into it, man. Uh, We saw the state of North Carolina uh, move into phase two of workouts, which um, there are some different stipulations. Uh, The same amount of kids are able to practice, but they're now able to share equipment, um, most notably a football, you know, for football purposes. Um, In your opinion, should we be practicing right now in CMS? Oh, absolutely. Um, You know, I I think when you look at some of the metrics that they, they look at, I think, first of all, look at the rest of the state. You know, uh, Q Tucker has said a couple of times that of the schools that are that are doing workouts, there has not been a single um, COVID case that's been contracted in anybody's workouts. Um, you know, I felt like CMS in the couple of weeks we had there in June and July to get ready for workouts in July, I thought they put really good protocols together. Uh, I felt like we were going to be extremely safe. We had all the sanitation you know, sanitation equipment that we needed. You know, we had the right protocols. We had our kids set up perfectly. And I I said that, that you know, a couple of days before they canceled us, I told some people that I thought our kids were going to be safer with us than they would have been any other place, you know, that they might be during that time. So I, from a safety issue, I certainly think we can handle it. And obviously we're starting to get late in the summer here. And if the state looks like they're moving forward, you know, they decided to go to phase two of workouts yesterday. If they're moving towards actually starting on September 1st, man, we're, we're going to be really behind the eight ball if we don't get our kids out there really quickly. Absolutely. 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 And just to follow up on that, um, you mentioned safety. You see the, the camps going on. You've seen some of the seven on seven stuff earlier uh, through different organizations. Um, how does that make you feel? Do you tell your players not to participate in those kind of things or what, what kind of direction do you give your guys in regards to those um, items? You know, ordinarily this time of the year, obviously I wouldn't want them doing that while, you know, we have our stuff going on, but now with nothing else, you know, for them to do, sure. You know, go ahead. Um, you know, Drake went out and did a camp out in Indianapolis this past weekend that, you know, obviously this, if we were in normal circumstances, he probably wouldn't have done that. Um, You know, we got guys that are going and working with, you know, other, you know, outside coaches that, again, certainly right now we wouldn't be doing that. But at this point, you know, I'm I'm encouraging them to do it just to get any kind of work in. Yeah, that's a very good point. 
to to because to you to your point, um, you're gonna be behind eight ball if um, football is going to start September first, as you said, and it, and that's the way it's trending. Uh, so we gotta we gotta do something. We gotta right. do something because you know, like you like we said before the show, if you start having a game late September. Uh, just from a conditioning standpoint, you're worried about your kids going out there, hurting themselves and, you know, getting. Not, no doubt about it. I mean, I think we're at the point now where if we don't get our guys out there in August and the state decides to start September 1st, you know, I, I don't feel comfortable putting our kids out there for a game, really, for almost a, at least a month, you know, if we don't get something going in, you know, here in August. Well, yeah, I totally agree. Coach. Totally agree, man. Um. Talk to us a little bit about facility and equities. It's kind of come up a little bit again uh, with some some talk we had last week. Um, a lot of people don't know you guys at Myers Park are affected by this as well. Oh, yeah. You know, Myers Park's kind of a, a double-edged sword on the the one side. I, I feel like our inside facilities are, are, you know, pretty special. You know, we have the two gyms, one of which is, you know, is, is really large, you know, all of us coaches have our own offices and, you know, we do have good locker facilities in our, our weight room. You know, we feel like our weight room is probably as good as there is, you know, maybe in the entire state. Um, but when you get outside, uh, that's where things kind of change a little bit for us. You know, we don't have a single, you know, hundred yard area where we can practice. Uh, we have to use the baseball outfield for a lot of our practice time. And, you know, then when, we have any kind of bad weather um, our fields don't handle water very well you know i think like i, I told you before the show we spent probably about a thousand dollars last year in the rental of you know a couple of turf fields uh, we usually rent revolution park um, when it's when it's really bad um, you know we have to pay to rent their field um, to go over and use it and then on top of that you know we have to get on buses and you know bus over there and um so it, it's not it's not the most ideal situation from a practice standpoint. And, you know, we don't have turf for games either. So, um, you know, we're at the mercy of the weather there as well. Yeah, Coach, so what, what can we do about it if there's anything we can do, you know, to try to fix this problem? Well, you know, CMS had that, you know, turf list of, you know, team, you know, schools that were going to get turf and, I think that just seems like it's kind of stopped. I knew we were probably at the bottom of the list, but, um, you know, I don't know, you know, and, and I understand you have to replace, you know, the turfs every, you know, so many years, but, you know, when you look at, you know, teams that already have that are on their, you know, second, second turfs, you know, while, you know, we can't practice when it rains, you know, I think that's a little bit frustrating and, and, and again, I know we even have it, you know, better than than other people. Um, but I do think there's some, you know, some serious inequities. And, you know, I obviously hope it's something that they take a look at. The other thing that I would hope is that if the individual schools can work um, to raise the money on their own, to do things for their own selves, that they let them go ahead and do that. Um, you know, we've, we've got a, a campaign going now to raise money to put turf on our field. And I think one of the concerns that some people have is that, you know, we'll raise the money, but they won't let us do it because, you know, maybe somebody else can't raise the money. So I don't know. There's a, there's a, you know, that that's a really loaded question. And there's a lot of things to unpack there when you start getting into facilities. Absolutely. Coach. And I, I'll tell you, you know, I think if someone can raise the money, they, they should have the right to upgrade the facilities. I mean, it's, you know, I, I don't see why. I know it, it may look bad, but right. I don't think that's right. Um, I, I really don't. Uh, we have a comment here from uh, Tracy Carson. Uh, she says, other states are practicing. Public schools are practices, practicing. Camps are happening. Our kids are behind. And, you know, she's absolutely right. I mean, you look at, you know, right on the button, you know, and, and it's not like when, you know, you, she says that, you know, other states and other public schools, it's not like they're public schools, you know, far away. Union, you know, Union County right next door is practicing. Mm -hmm. Every private school in Charlotte is practicing. Yeah. So yeah. we don't even have to go outside of, of, you know, Mecklenburg County to find teams that are actually practicing, you know, because our private schools are doing it. You know, Rock Hill is, 
you know, right down the, the street from Charlotte. You know, all of those teams are practicing. And I just, you know, I, and I don't even get into so much of the, the competitive inequity of one jurisdiction versus the other. I just think it's just the, the, the benefit for the kids. And, you know, we're, we're, we're getting to the point now where I, I really think we have to start considering the mental health of these kids and what we're doing to them by basically locking them up for, you know, however many months it's been. You know, I, I think the, the mental illness part of this is really something that has to be taken into effect as well. That's a great point. Uh, I, I want to move into this next question by just asking you about your players. Um, have they talked to you? Have they expressed how they're feeling right now? Um, what, what have they said? What kind of dialogue have you had with them? You know, I, I know it's, you know, kind of the obvious word, but, you know, my my interactions with, with our players, the, the frustration is the biggest, you know, word that comes up. And I think when you go back to we were supposed to start June 15th, and then, you know, right before, you know, a few days before that, they pulled the plug, pushed us to July 6th. And then, you know, we spent that time between June 15th and July 6th, you know, as coaches, you know, we went to classes on, on how to do this. You know, we learned how to deal with the equipment. We had to put all of our protocols together. We had to send it off. I had to communicate that with all of our families and all of our parents. And then at, you know, three o'clock, on a Thursday before a three day holiday weekend, you know, they come out and say, well, we're not going to do that to you. And man, the, the texts and the phone calls I got from my, you know, my players that night, it was just, it was, it was devastating. And, um, you know, one of them I thought described it perfectly. He's like, man, this is, this is twice now they've canceled Christmas morning on us. And, you know, so I think just overall frustration, um, these guys want to be with their peers. They want to be with their friends. They want to be with their coaches. You know, for a lot of these guys, this, this is their best family. And we are taking away the opportunity for them to be with um, the group of people that they enjoy being with the most. And, you know, again, I mean, I understand people are in a difficult situation, but um, I think the other thing I would tell you right now is there, there's a real lack of hope because there's really no direction as to when, you know, this is going to be revisited. Well said. Well said. Well said. Well said. Yeah. And obviously you had some players, um, Taj L and Katie Redfern, uh, spur on the CMS athletes protests we saw at their headquarters recently. Uh, what can you say about those two kids and their efforts to um, have their voices heard by CMS? Well, you know, that kind of stemmed from a, a conversation. We have a, a, a leadership group within our program, um, about 12 kids. And, you know, we have, you know, meetings with that group and in and, and a meeting with that group of kids, um, a Zoom meeting, not an in-person meeting, but in a Zoom meeting with, with that group, um, you know, we just kind of discussed the fact that, hey, um, maybe it's time that the, the you know, people hear from the kids and hear from, you know, the athletes as to what this is doing to y'all and, and what you guys want. And the meeting ended and like two days later, you know, those guys had organized this whole thing. They were kind of the two that kind of took it and, and ran with it a little bit. And, you know, I think Drake was also a little bit of part of that as well, but, you know, Drake kind of let those guys just kind of go be the face of everything. And, um, you know, I helped them a little bit with, you know, kind of putting their their platform together of, of what they wanted to speak. They didn't want to just say, all right, we want this and not have, you know, some kind of supporting facts. And I thought they did a great job with, you know, with what they put together and um, the facts they came up with. I, and I was real proud of them. I was real proud of the fact that, you know, as a school, we were able to get so many other athletes from our school there. And, um, you know, I think we had six different schools represented you know, I kind of thought maybe we have some more kids there, but um, was just real proud of those guys and, and how how their teammates, you know, rallied around them and, and how the other athletes at our school rallied behind them. And um, whether or not it did any good is is isn't really the point. I think the fact that those guys, you know, learned something uh, and, and how to advocate for themselves and and you know, it was educational for them no matter you know what came out of it. 
Absolutely. Yeah, saw some of the uh, video and the pictures from the uh, media coverage. Um, it was great to see so many schools and different athletes come together uh, for a unified message. And they just they want to play. They want answers. Um, they want direction. And I think we all, you know, want the same thing. And, um, you know, that was part of the, the thing I said last week on our uh, show. We just, you know, give us something, you know, right. um, to, to, you know, like you said earlier, hope. Hope. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Um, so we're going to jump to the Southwestern 4A preseason all-conference team. You got a lot of talent over there, and you had a lot of players um, that we uh, highlighted on this team. Uh, talk about some of those guys um, that are going to make be uh, big players for you this year. Well, I mean, if you look at the, the list you put together, um, I guess you had Drake there as a quarterback. Uh, I guess you really kind of went on a limb there. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, I, I think, and, and I'm, you know, I might be biased, whatever the case is. I mean, I think he's as good as any quarterback in the country. And, um, you know, we've been very, very fortunate um, over the last few years to, you know, our quarterbacks have gone to, you know, Texas, El Paso and North Carolina and Georgetown. And, you know, we've had a really good run of, of quarterbacks, you know, since I've been here. Um, but, you know, Drake's on a, just a completely different level. And um, I, I, everything, you know, starts with him. He's our, you know, our, our leader on and off the field. And, um, you know, I, 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 what I feel best about offensively is, you know, we had seven different guys um, start at least two or three games on the offensive line last year. And five of those guys are back. Um, you know, you talk on the your all conference team, Bo Crutcher, um, and, and Cam Nichols, two rising juniors who um, anchored the right side of our line last year. Um, you know, they're probably both going to, you know, play the guard positions for us and just got a tremendous amount of experience last year as sophomores starting every game. Um, and then, you know, Zaire Falls and Kyle Novak um, both started half the season for us last year and Kate Ferguson, our center, um, started a good bit as well. So we got five guys, you know, we'll average probably about 275, 280 up front. So, you know, we feel really good that that's going to be a big strength for us, that group up front. Um, you know, Jordan Bly, I think he's probably one of the most underrated guys probably in the state as a receiver. Um, I think he's as good as anybody there is. He just has been playing with some really, really good receivers the last couple of years, but this will be his – you know, his real big chance to shine, um, you know, Kader and Red, KD Redford, you talked about earlier, um, kind of split carries last year. Um, you know, he's he's going to be kind of one of the feature backs. Um, probably our, our do-everything guy, Jacob Newman, um, you know, probably our, our best athlete there on offense. Um, you know, he's a guy that's probably going to lead the team in touches, whether it's, you know, carries or receptions. He's going to play a little bit. A receiver for us, but you know he's also going to get a significant amount of you know touches at, at running back. So you know he'll probably touch the ball more than anybody. Um, you know defensively, again I think the strength of our, our defense is probably our D line. You know you had two guys there on your list, Jimmy Simpson and Andrew Bookman. Andrew's a three year starter at D tackle for us. Has been just a stalwart there for us. You know Jimmy's you know the strongest guy on our team at 290 pounds. There inside those two guys, you know, along with Jordan Tinsley, the pot roast, um, you know, those three guys in the interior of our defense, that's probably one of our biggest strengths. Um, and probably one of the guys we feel really good about is a rising junior Max McGuire um, at the one defensive end spot. Uh, our secondary feel really, really good about that. Um, Amari Philly, all um, a corner that transferred from Mountain Island Charters, got some offers from you know, Florida and Charlotte, a couple other places. I feel like he's going to give us a great, you know, corner there. Um, Phillips Alvarez is a is a guy that's going to play safety for us. Um, his two brothers have both started in the secondary for us, Alex and, and Patrick. And I'm going to I'm going to tick, you know, Patrick and, and Alex off and tell you that Phillips is probably going to be the best of all three of them. And then, you know, the leader of our, our defense will be Taj. You know, Taj Yell at safety, just committed to Old Dominion. Um, 
you know, I feel like um, Taj is, is you know, the, the leader of our defense. And I would say right now our biggest challenge is, you know, our linebacking core. We've got to replace some guys there. And, um, you know, right now we got a transfer from the Legion Collegiate down there in Rock Hill, Kian Abdul-Rahim, who started every game for them as a freshman last year. Henry Jonas is a kid who um, was a defensive lineman for us last year. Um, is going to be a starter there for us. So we've, you know, that's probably our biggest, um, you know, our biggest area of need is at linebacker. Um, but special teams wise, feel like we're in really good shape. Matt Dennis is one of the top kickers in the country, uh, committed to Wake Forest, been our kicker for two years, has never missed a field goal in two years. He's something like 11 for 11 in field goals. Um, so, I mean, he certainly gives us a weapon there. So, um, yeah, and, and Jacob and Jordan uh, both give us really good return guys. And um, we get a kid back, uh, Adrian Ely, who was with us in ninth and 10th grade uh, and played at Sun Valley last year as our second leading receiver, um, has moved back to, to, to Myers Park. Um, so it gives us a, another real good threat there at, uh, at that receiver. So um, I don't know, it's kind of a brief rundown there. It's a lot of talent, man. It's a lot of talent. And I, I'm going to throw in one that I, I saw, you know, I was at the uh, VTO camp. Um, Colin Reese, um, he made yeah. some incredible catches out there. And I think, you know, he's going to be one that's exciting to watch as well. So one of our young receivers and in a really, really good um, group of young receivers, we've got a really good group of rising sophomore receivers and, Colin's the most fundamentally sound of that group, probably the fastest of that group. Mm -hmm. um, there's a, a tight end there, Donye Coleman, um, oh. you know, who's a 6'2", about 210-pound, you know, rising sophomore tight end. So, um, you know, it's just, you know, those guys are, are sophomores, and um, and some of them are probably going to play a little bit of a role for us this year. Yeah, they go, man. Uh, you know, Coach, I appreciate you coming on, man. Um, I think that I can't. I can't forget about you know, we talk about Drake, but mm -hmm. Owen McCown, Owen McCown, our backup quarterback, is um, I think is as good as there is in the area. You know, yes. he's got offers from Virginia Tech, Charlotte, UNLV, and I don't. I don't think it's a stretch to say we've got the best quarterback situation probably in, in the country. Um, you know, with, with a backup quarterback that's got power five offers. Um, and, you know, and I, and I just want to add one more thing I'll say about this is that ahead, I think that says a lot about where our program is. You know, people want to, you know, say what's, what's the culture of your program. And Owen's a perfect example of that. More than any kid in the Charlotte area, Owen McCown would have a reason to go to another school where he could play. You know, he, he might very well be the second best quarterback in Charlotte. He just happens to play behind maybe the best in the country. And so it would be a great opportunity maybe for him to go somewhere else and play. But he loves our program, you know, so much. He loves the culture and everything that our program is about and has no visions of going anywhere else because he wants to be a part of Myers Park football. Amen. That is a true testament right there. And if you're a young quarterback, and I, you know, I don't usually say this, but I mean, hey, if you're a young quarterback, I mean, you see what, you know, you've been producing over there. I mean, some of the guys you mentioned, uh, uh, Clay Norris and uh, Braden Hawkins and Jack uh, Davidson. Yeah, we've yeah, had some, yeah. we've had a pretty good run. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, that says you, you're um, a quarterback guru over there, coach. And, um, you know, if you're a young QB, man, that's the place to be, man. You're, you're gonna go, you're gonna go big. So, um, hey, uh, checks in the mail, man. Keep recruiting, <laughs> keep recruiting quarterbacks for me. <laughs> we gotta make some money somehow around here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Coach, man, I appreciate you coming on, man. It was great, and um, you know, hopefully, we'll be seeing you on the football field at practice. Gosh, I, I sure hope so, man. And I appreciate what you're doing. Appreciate what you and your guys are doing to, you know, promote football and. Mm -hmm. um, it means a lot. And, and you know, I think our, our kids in this area, you know, really should realize how fortunate they are to be in Charlotte where, you oh, know, we have guys like you and others that do such a great job of promoting our game. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you so much for the kind words, Coach. We appreciate it, man. All right. All right. We'll see you, man.
All right, so that was uh, Myers Park head coach Scott Chadwick on with us. Um, you know, gave us a lot of good stuff, um, you know, talking about all the talent that's over there at Myers Park. Um, you know, we loaded up, you know, the Southwestern 4A preseason all-conference team uh, with their guys. Um, I'm going to bring the crew in and introduce them um, for a minute here before we get to our next guest who's ready to go. Um, so let's bring in the juice man. There's Ken. There's Mr. Billups. And there's our producer, Brandon Black. All right, guys. So, <laughs> so, so what, what did you think about what Coach Chadwick had to say? Any thoughts? Well, if you, if you guys remember a few weeks ago. I guess back, if I turn y'all's mics. Can y'all hear me? Well, if you guys remember a few yeah, weeks. Yeah, you good, Coach. If you guys remember a few weeks back, man, I said, um, don't sleep on Myers Park. Don't sleep on Myers Park. Um, we were talking about some of the schools in the area. I talked about Myers Park. You can go run and take back Billups. You can squinch your eyes all you want. Swagger Valley. You remember. Everybody remember when I said it. Don't sleep on Myers nobody, Park. Nobody, I, nobody in their right mind sleeping on Myers Park. I got well, like drink I made, quarterback. Oh, ho, oh, oh, ho, oh, ho. Wait a minute, Tupac Valley. Let me finish what I'm saying first. <laughs> now, as I was saying, I said a few weeks ago. That do not do not sleep on Myers Park. Though they got some kids that are gone, they're going to play D1 ball. They got Drake May over there. They got some pieces that they brought in, some kids that's transferred in. They're going to be a force to reckon with. I did mention Vans, but I also mentioned Myers Park as one of my favorites in the area. And Coach Bills need to worry about what's going to happen over there on the west side of Charlotte. Don't worry about what's happening anywhere else. All my predictions. What's going to happen on the west side, partner? I see you got your cap off today. I'm glad to see your little headline showing. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, Coach Chad, we're right, man. That darn JV. Them JV receivers you got over there. I ain't sleep on them jokers because I know what they got. And he right. That's the one thing Pep missed on that list. And Pep may not may or forget about it, but little Al Rez over there. He probably one of the best darn safeties in the um in the city already as a rising sophomore. That boy is a ball player. And you don't go too many places where you got two quarterbacks who got D1 offers. That's that's rare. And if Drake go down, McCown company that probably carried them boys to the state championship too. That look, he got swag. And, and he ain't the only McCown over there. They got another one over there too that throw the ball too. So they loaded. I don't know who was sleeping on them, but my park is a force yeah. to be re resting as long as yeah, Drake made the quarterback. If someone would sleep on Myers Park, they don't know Charlotte High School football. That's all I got to say. Exactly. Better uh, pop a red bull. <laughs> I mean, having a power five backup, that sums it up right there. You could just that if you just want to summarize the program in one sentence, backup, mm. backup QB with power five offers. And don't yeah. sleep on them. Don't sleep on them receivers. You don't know about because he just he just gave you gave one away when you said Reese, little Reese. Oh, they, yeah. got, they got like three more. <laughs> they <laughs> <knew it. laughs> well, you got and you guys know this. I mean, great quarterbacks make great wide receivers. And when you're blessed with a kid like Drake May, I mean, you know, just just going through the film this week and and watching some of their guys play, you know, it's mesmerizing watching what they do offensively. I think they average fifty points. A game this year they only gave up like 10 points a game i mean that's incredible that's numbers that we haven't seen since another green team wearing gold helmets uh back 15 years ago with some of the stuff that they were doing uh and i honestly think just the film that i've seen of drake may he may be the best quarterback in north carolina history and i coached against chris i coached against joe cox but i think that drake may he's got all the tools to be even better than they were it's incredible to watch Gotta go get a ring. Gotta go get a ring on this belt for him, coach. Gotta oh, yeah. All right, we we gonna come back to that in just a minute. All right, so uh, we the guys are, are fired up, and we got a lot to say later on about you know the positions in the Southwest and the four A uh, when we get to the preseason all conference team. Uh, but we're gonna bring on our next guest now. Uh, this man is a, a passionate head coach. Uh, he's a great leader of men. Uh, we spoke with him when we did the uh, talk on racial issues and social injustice. And um, we're going to bring him on right now. And he, we're going to talk to him a little bit 
about what's going on over there on the east side at Rocky River High School, and that's Orlando Gray. Here we go. How you doing, Coach? Hey, man, I'm doing great. Just honored to be here. Excited to be able to get on your platform. Uh, enjoy definitely listening to Coach Chadwick and, and your guys. So I think this is a great thing that you're doing. So just glad to be here, man. No, thank you for coming on, man. Thank you for coming on. Definitely appreciate it. Um, so we're going to jump right into it, man. Uh, we asked uh, Coach Chadwick earlier, I'm going to ask you the same question. We saw the uh, state of North Carolina move into phase two of practicing now, which means you can start sharing equipment, most notably footballs, um, but keeping players in the same pods. Yeah. Uh, but in your opinion, should we be having high school football practice in CMS right now? Um. Me personally, I, I believe that we are prepared to do it. Uh, so that would be the big question for, for for folks that are thinking about or want to be out there is the preparation. I think we put in plenty of preparation uh, to take safety precautions for our kids. Uh, and our kids are on board with uh, doing things different. And so uh, I believe we should be on the field, but uh, you know, unfortunately that's not our call. Uh, and I, I know safety is the big concern uh, for those that are um, in our uh, superintendent's office and things of that nature. But, you know, I would love to be on the field. Uh, I'm, I'm, I feel like the kids will not, I, I don't have as much anxiety, but I do have some anxiety because at this point you're, you're gearing up, we're gearing up for that first game. And uh, right now to not have been on the field in, in months and in almost a year, uh, it, it's really, it's, it's hard to deal with, but uh, again, like I said, I would love to be on the field. I think we're prepared for it. Uh, CMS did a great job of uh, sending us through training uh, and sending us a blueprint. I think the state of North Carolina put out a great plan uh, to help us execute practice and, and being able to get out there uh, to keep our kids safe, but also to, to, to do what we love to do and what our kids love to do. So, uh, right now, it's just, you know, unfortunate that we're not out. Hopefully, you know, we'll see uh, with the state of North Carolina going into phase two. Hopefully, uh, you know, that kind of gives us a, a edge or a nudge to get out there. Um, uh, Coach Chad would say something that I think is very important. Uh, the longer we wait, uh, the to me, the the more risk for injury uh, there is for our, for our student athletes, not just football, but all of the fall sports. I mean, to, to to jump right out and to start playing games without having the amount of conditioning that we're used to having, uh, the amount of training that we're used to being able to give to our student athletes. Uh, we definitely, we uh, uh, raise the risk of injury and that's what we don't want uh, is for our kids, especially our seniors uh, to get out or be put in situations where there is more harm than good and so the longer we wait, I think we definitely have to start considering what, how long the season will be or when the start of our first games or initial games will take place. Because for me, I don't, I don't want to, to put our kids in jeopardy as it relates to injuries and those type of things and heat acclimation. Um, so, yeah, I like to get on out there, Pep. I like to get out there as soon as possible. Yeah, man, we would too. Um... You know, kind of fiending right now, getting to August 1st, man, and wanting to cover some real football and all these yeah. camps. I mean, the camps are cool. Don't get me wrong, but it's about time to get some pads going. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> issue out. So, listen, we haven't even been able to issue helmets and shoulder pads. So, like, you know, that's that's the other thing that, you know, we're behind in so many areas, you know, of our organization and our program and what we would have already have done and already have situated. And so that adds even more pressure uh, to our kids getting used to their equipment. Whereas by now, our kids already have their equipment. They, they've been in their uh, shoulder pads and helmets all summer, even though we haven't had, wouldn't have had contact right now, but they will be used to those things. And so that's why I say, you know, the longer we wait, uh, the higher risk for heat injuries, uh, physical injuries, and of course, our kids right now are so mentally stressed out. You, you don't know what the kids are going to do when they get out there. You know, are they going to start trying to uh, uh, rush the process? And that's what that's what you don't want in the game of football. Football is has a process to it that has uh, been tested over time and that works. And so anytime you start 
uh, deviating from that process. Uh, because this game is such a violent, physical game, uh, you, you, you subject yourself to those type of things. And so that's what we don't want uh, for, for any kid, not just Rocky River kid, but for any kid that, uh, in high school sports. Well said, Coach. I totally agree. Totally agree, man. So uh, we got a comment, and um, it's our buddy Coach Seidel returning to love from last week. <laughs> great, great coach, class act. Julie man, Moore. that's that's my guy, man. That's a long <laughs> story, but yeah, Coach Seidel is my guy. I'm, I'm actually gonna try to go see him in a couple in a couple days and go down to Blackwood and see uh, how he's doing down there. Good deal, good deal. He's a good man too. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so we talk about a reduced season, obviously, with the um, delay that we're going through right now. But mm -hmm. you know, if we have a, a reduced season, in your opinion, what are the keys to getting off to a fast start? Wow, uh, a reduced season. If we if we start out in conference play, I mean, it really for us we start out with the top three, four teams in our league. Uh, we start out with, we would start out with Butler, Myers Park, Hickory Ridge, right off the gate. And so for us, the team we have, uh, we have a pretty good team. And I know, you know, a lot of every a lot of people have us in the in the bottom part of the conference, which, you know, is well deserved based on our uh, last year's record and how we didn't execute and, and produce and finish games. But I'm excited about what we have. Uh, but that we would definitely have to get out to a phenomenal start because we start with the best in our conference and uh, two programs that have uh, been perennial powerhouses in the state of North Carolina, not just in Charlotte and Butler and Myers Park. And so we come out the gate with, with, with uh, a ton of challenges. And Hickory Ridge, uh, Jupiter Wilson is doing a great job with that program. Uh, I, uh, he uh, took over after Coach Griner and Coach Griner took over after Coach Seidel. And so Hickory Ridge is, a, is a, a program to be reckoned with as well. I know they don't get as much uh, notoriety as some of the, the bigger Charlotte schools, but they, they have a good program there. So we would start out our season with three of the, you know, probably top 10 schools in 4A football. So um, getting off to a great start is going to be great. It's going to be key for us. I mean, but I mean, it's going to be key for everybody, but especially us, especially with the conference we're in, we, we can't afford to lose uh come out the gate and lose three in a row. Uh that will put us in, in a tough situation. So uh we definitely are looking forward to, to competing this year. We were looking forward to that non-conference. We had a really good non-conference schedule. Uh and I thought that would really get some of our young kids uh, acclimated and ready to go. We have some talented young kids that we're we're excited about. Uh but to really jump out there in the fire week one, you know, uh it's gonna be a shock to some of them. But you know, if we get to play, that's that's just what it is. You know, you got to get, you got to be ready to play week in and week out in Charlotte. I don't care if you're playing the 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 worst team or the team with the worst record in Charlotte. They're talented football players. They're great coaches uh, on those teams, and so you have to be ready week in and week out. So no matter who you play, but definitely getting out to a good start is going to be key for us uh, this year. Because uh, I won't say too much, but I'm excited about what we got in the building. You know, I know we don't. We don't have a lot of glamour kids and, and big power five kids, but we got a lot of hardworking kids that are hungry. These kids that are my seniors, uh, they came in, in into Rocky River with me. They were freshmen. And so a lot of them uh, played varsity football as sophomores and a couple of them played as freshmen. So uh, I think this will be the year that we really do well. But again, it's, you know, you start off with that gauntlet, man, you, you got to be ready. And that's why I say, it's really it's going to be really important for us to get out on the field and get to conditioning and getting our kids in the building so that we're ready for that because you're talking about Butler runs the football as good as anybody and play great defense. So you're talking about physical, uh, fast teams. You talk about Myers Park. You talk about the talent they have on offense and and how they can put numbers on you. You know so and then Hickory Ridge uh, has a physical run an attack uh, that they use. So you're talking about three games that, you know, you hope you don't come out with injuries, <laughs> let alone just having a, a, a fast start. You know, you hope you can 
keep your team healthy through those three uh, games. So, but that's how my our start will look, especially if we don't have any non-conference games. Yeah, that, that yeah, that's a tough start, Coach. I didn't know it was like that, man. Yeah. But you mentioned your young kids. I saw those guys. Um, JV went up. Uh, I think it was six and four last year. Yes. You yes. do have some young talent on that team coming up. Uh, I'm gonna bring in Coach uh, Josh Crow here. He's got a question for you, Coach. Okay. What's going on, Coach? How you doing, man? I'm doing great, Coach. How are you? Good, man. Doing great, man. Just a quick question, man. I know we we talked about preparation and being able to get out of the gate the right way. You know, you know, perfect scenario, man. NCHSAA opens this thing up. CMS opens this thing up tomorrow. What does the process look like for you guys right now as far as for getting started and getting going so that you can have that great start that you talked about? Well, one of the things we've been doing since March, since we got out, um, we purposefully started using, utilizing the technology to, to connect with our kids. So uh, since a I would say that first week in April, we've been doing Zoom meetings and uh, with our whole team. I do a, a Monday mindset with our guys just to get our week started. We also have been doing position meetings uh, since then. So every week our kids uh, are in position meetings Monday through Thursday. And so that's been, you know, I won't say uh, a great thing because, well, that's been a benefit to us because of the COVID-19, not being able to, get on the field, we've been able to do a lot of the mental preparation. Uh, and that will help Rocky River because Rocky River has been known to have talent. You know, for me coming in, it is getting us prepared mentally uh, for the game. You know, knowing our assignments, knowing how to execute our game plan, uh, being first and foremost in, in great physical uh, condition and shape. And so that has been a benefit for us in our preparation. It's been able to get on Zoom, uh, get our kids connected with our coaches, being able to break down information and get them understanding all of our scheme inside and out. Uh, and so I'm excited about that. Just in, in the last few weeks, all of our coaching staff have been doing, giving our kids tests and giving them uh, uh, review questions and stuff. And, and they've been doing great in understanding our uh, our scheme and, and so that that is the the biggest thing that I, I will take from this. Uh, I won't say layoff, but these past few months is us being able to get our kids to understand what we want them to do. Now, again, we know as, as football coaches and former players, when you get out there in the heat, you know you will start forgetting some of the stuff. But I feel like we're much further along as it relates to our preparation uh, for the mental part of the game. As it relates to what we'll do once we get on the field, we we have plans in place, uh, you know, to be able to utilize our facility. We're pretty fortunate. School's only 10 years old. And so we do have turf, a turf field, but we also have a very large practice field, practice area where we can get out and get things done. And so uh, we have plans in place. It's just a matter of when we get to execute those plans uh, as it relates to getting our kids out there. So. I uh, feel like we're we're prepared. I have a, a really good staff. I've been able to hire on some some good young coaches and bring in some older coaches with some experience. Uh, and I, I feel really good about my staff this year. We've been building the staff for the last three years. And uh, we've had some coaches come and go. Uh, some have gone on to other states to be head coaches and different coordinators and stuff like that. So I feel like that is one of the really good things that I have going for us is we have some good men in the building and uh, that are connecting with our kids and getting them prepared for this season. It's a great answer, Coach. Great answer. It, and it takes a lot of creativity and flexibility to um, make those plans in this pandemic right now, man. Yeah. Um, right now, um, have you talked with your kids? Um, and if you have, how are they doing? And what are they saying and communicating to you uh, with everything going on? As I said before, yeah, every Monday, ever since we got out, I, I knew that I needed to stay in contact with my kids because, uh, for one, I knew that this senior class have bought into what I want to do as it relates to building this program. Uh, a couple of a few of my kids had opportunities to go other places, uh, but they decided to stay and, and walk, walk, walk out the process. And so, 
uh, every Monday morning at 10 a.m., you know, we, we connect on Zoom and we do a, a motivation and we talk about uh, even life without football, you know, and that's, you know, we don't want to talk about it, but, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a, a potential reality that we may not have it. You know, we don't want to talk. We don't want that to be the case, but, you know, so we talk about those things and, and what life would be without football and that, you know, we, I, I try to tell our kids that, you know, you have a purpose that goes beyond sports that you will put on this earth to do. And so those are the things we try to talk about. Of course, you know, teenagers, you know, they want to play football. They want to play sports. They want to be able to do the things they love. And so I understand their anxiety. And so that's why I try to connect with them every week. Uh, my coaches, they connect with them on non-football related issues. You know, we want to make sure that our kids' mental uh, uh, health is it's important to us. And so, of course, you know, a lot of them are emotional about it. And I talked to my seniors uh, last week. You know, some of them, you know, I try to do a lot as it relates to their schedules, academic schedules to get them prepared to be able to graduate, uh, be mid-year grads. And a lot of them are in that situation uh, to, and prepared to go to school. But I talked to them about, you know, what if we play in the spring? And uh, all of them said, Coach, I want to finish what we started. You know, and that was that was touching for me because, you know, I know a lot of these guys have opportunities to go play college ball and, and to get out of high school uh, early and go and start their uh, college career in January. But again, we don't know how that's going to look uh, as it relates to the NCAA. But, you know, for my guys to say that, it meant the, it meant the world to me that they want to finish what we started four years ago. And uh, so that's kind of been our mindset. Our kids are, you know, like everybody else's kids, they're out trying to work on their own. Uh, I have a few kids that have been in some of the seven on seven camps and they're out, you know, on the field trying to work. And so they're trying to stay busy uh, for the most part. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's one of those things we've never gone through this. And we hope that when we come out of this, that our kids' mental and emotional health is, is stronger and better uh, because life does go on uh, when you have adversity. And so we talk about that as football coaches, about overcoming adversity. So, you know, we hope that we can get through this and we definitely hope we can play the season. But, yeah, we, we try to stay connected with them each week, you know, and talk about those mental, emotional things, you know, just to kind of keep them – encouraged you know and so hopefully what we're doing is working and uh, right now we you know we're just hopeful that we can get started absolutely coach absolutely and you got some some more fans here coach uh yeah, scoop 29 on uh twitter says best coach in the 704 so wow <laughs> yeah there you go, there you go. I, I, i'm about to do I'm about to live up to that. I don't know who Scoop 29 <laughs> is, but you know we're working hard to try to try to turn the turn some things around. You know, or not necessarily turn things around, but just keep building on what we started a few Absolutely. years ago. Absolutely. Um, I'm gonna bring in Coach Brandon Billups. He's got a question for you as well, Coach. What's up, Coach Billups? I can't hear you, Coach. That's my fault. There I'm mute, me, Pep. <laughs> it's always it's always a pleasure, Coach Gray. It's always yeah. a pleasure. He's one of the um, best defensive-minded coaches in the state, and um, and I love what he's doing over there. Wow. Uh, I want to ask you a quick question um, about something that you sell great. You and um, your AD, Mr. Steven, over there. Yes, um, Coach Robson. Oh yeah, Coach Robson. I love it. I love y'all guys over there. Um, speak on where you feel out, like, where you feel like you're at in your process, the culture building, because you had to come over there and change that culture over there at Rocky River and establish your own culture. And yeah. a lot of people don't know that that's something you really excel at. Like you're, you're one of the greatest motivators and pre people I ever been around. I don't tell you that a lot, but you know, I love you, but go on yeah, and ask that yeah. question for me, big dog. Definitely. Uh, culture is the key. I mean, you can have a ton of talent. And again, like I said, you you can't walk into any school in Charlotte and not find talent. Uh, you can walk into Garringer, Bay Academy, East Mac, you name, you go down the list, uh, you can find talent. Uh, the thing that we emphasize more than anything is culture and, and establishing 
culture. At, when, when I arrived at Rocky River, uh, when I first off, when I got hired, I looked at the film and I said, man, there is so much talent on this team. It is ridiculous. And I, I coached at L. Brown High School and we, we always had, you know, decent talent. But, you know, we, we could in some years we just couldn't put talent. We didn't have talent on both sides of the ball. And so when I got to Rocky River and in my 20 some years of coaching, I've I've had talent on both sides of the ball, but I knew uh, it was the inner workings that we had to we have to fix. Uh, just the uh, ability for our kids to trust the process and what we're doing, uh, to buy into to being great people. Uh, we talk about that all the time. Being a great person uh, is, is a good thing. Uh, being respectful is a, uh, is a great thing. And so uh, my, my guys have, have really, like I said, this, this senior class have become leaders. And those are the things that I look for when I arrived at Rocky River that we didn't have. We had really good talented football players, but we didn't have leaders. And I've known in my years of coaching that the player-led teams are the best teams. The teams that where the coaches don't have to police the kids, where the the the, the leaders and the, and the upperclassmen they they teach the younger kids the process. They teach the younger kids uh, how we do things at whatever program it is. And so when you can get that going, you can build a successful program. And it's not just football. For me, I knew coming in that I had to help galvanize the school. And so right now, along with my principal, Erica Turner, and our AD, Steve Robson, and our admin staff, I believe that we're turning the corner for Rocky River High School, uh, not just as a football program, but as a school in general. And so I believe once we continue, as we continue to uh, build upon the culture that we're implementing, I think you'll see great things from Rocky River High School. I'm not, I'm not going to predict the state championship. Obviously, every head football coach wants to win a state championship, but I do want to see our kids be successful men. I want them to be great husbands. I want them to be great fathers. I want them to be great productive citizens in our society. Uh, we know there's so much going on, but that those are the emphasis that we, we are, are putting on our kids and our culture at Rocky River. So I think we're in a good place uh, every day. It's a work in progress uh, because you guys know this this teenage, this generation is different from us. And so we're doing a lot of things to try to, you know, keep that culture, that keeping, keep making the right steps or stepping forward in our culture building at Rocky River. Well said, Coach. Well said. That's a great answer. Um, real quick, uh, we had uh, three of your players on our preseason uh, all-conference team here. Mm -hmm. uh, Antoine Collins, uh, yes. wide receiver, uh, Corian Sharp on the yes. O-line, and uh, Javon McIver at DB. Uh, mm -hmm. what, what can you say about each of those kids? Uh, those, those, All three of those kids are studs. Uh, they, they, All three of them will play at four-year schools. I think Sharp uh, and McIver with their size uh, have an opportunity. If they continue to work hard, uh, you know, we may see them on Sundays. Uh, AJ Collins is a phenomenal athlete uh, at you know five nine, 145 pounds, tough as nails, and so those guys are our leaders. Uh, they work, they they lead in the weight room, they're leading in the classroom. All those guys are 2.7 GPAs and better, uh, and so I'm excited about them. The, uh, Corian is be a four year starter for me. Um, Javon will be a second-year varsity player. He's underrated right now because he doesn't have a lot of varsity film, but he's going to he's gonna uh, be really good this year at corner. Uh, and A.J., like I say, he's, he's one of those guys that we're going to try to get the ball in his hands as often as we can. We also have a few guys that I, I, I'm excited about that I think are going to uh, jump into that all-conference uh, uh, team this year. Uh, Caleb Jennings, our running back, he's a three-year guy. He didn't have the season he wanted to last year. Plus, we have some really talented running backs in our conference. Uh, start with Davion Nelson and, and Mookie that was over at uh, uh, Hickory Ridge. And uh, uh, then you had, uh, the, I can't even remember his name, but the big horse over at uh, uh, Butler High School. Uh, so I think he's going to be able to, to jump into that 
that category. Gabe Palacio, who's an old lineman, who will be a three-year starter for us. I believe he's going to have a great year, all-conference year. And then on the defense side of the ball, I got a couple young guys and a returning veteran, uh, um, Zaire McCall, who will be a three-year varsity player for me. At defensive end, I think he's going to make a lot of noise. Kayshawn Royster got a lot of a press last year, uh, but I think uh, Zaire McCall is going to make some noise this year. And uh, uh, linebacker, uh, Ryzen Jr., who started for us as a sophomore, a goodness of the meaner. I think at at that linebacker position, he's going to he's gonna make some noise. So we got a few kids that we're excited about. And, uh, you know, again, I don't look at the press too much, and I, I don't really worry about you know, you know, where where we're ranked and all that stuff. I worry about, you know, when we get on the field, competing hard and making sure we leave an impression on the other team and those that watch the game. So, but those guys are our leaders. Yeah, man, those are some talented kids, man. I enjoyed, you know, looking at all their films and some of the guys you mentioned, especially at Gabe Palacios, I've seen in person at camps. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's hard to leave him off, man, but there's just so much talent in this league. Yes. Um, and it's incredible. You know, you try to put it all on one team and <laughs> can't, you can't do it. Do all. But when we talk about those positions later, I'm, I'm going to mention, you know, a number of your guys because they, they are, you know, really talented and they're a little under the radar. Yeah. Um, they deserve the spotlight um, and some shine on them. So, uh, coach, man, this was great. Um, you know, a lot of great points. Um, you know, you really – it seemed like the ratings came up when you came on, so. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, man. I just appreciate being on here. I think people are starting to get to know me. Yeah. In Charlotte, I think hopefully we're, we're, we're trying our best to, 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 to do a good job of having a great program that people will be proud of, that people will want to come and see our kids play, and then that we'll, we'll, we'll put a great product on the field and that also that we'll help young people have success. So, you know. I enjoy being. I enjoy talking to you all the time, Pep. So anytime, man, I, I I'm honored just to be on the show. Man, we appreciate you coming on, man. Thank you so much, Coach. You're welcome. You guys have a good rest of the week. You too, man. We'll see you soon. Hopefully on the practice field. Yes, hopefully on the practice field. <laughs> have a good one, Coach. All right. All right. So that was Rocky River uh, head coach Orlando Gray. Uh, talked about a lot of great things. Uh, talked about obviously his kids on the. Uh, Southwestern 4A preseason all-conference team, uh, very talented kids. Uh, we're going to talk about that here a little later. Uh, we're going to um, go to our next guest here in just a second, um, but I'll bring the guys back real quick for a quick wrap-up and any thoughts they had on uh, what Coach Gray had to say. Um, turn the microphones on this time. <laughs> All right, guys, any thoughts on that? You know, I think, I think Coach Gray – hit on something that's really important that, that I haven't heard a lot of coaches talk about is the fact that even helmets haven't been handed out in so many schools. I mean, you're talking about in May, typically you have about 75% of your helmets handed out with the exception being your freshman. It's not a short process. It's not an easy process for me. I always made sure all my helmets fit. I had other coaches helping out, but it would take about an hour for 10 kids to get through and get helmets to make sure they were fitted adequately. Um, you know, he brought up another point about kids rushing the process. When they get back out, they're trying to make up for lost time, and that could lead to more injuries. And then, good night, man. I was looking at his schedule. He is right. He has got a grist mill gauntlet if the season starts with conference play with Myers Park, with Butler, and with the team in Harrisburg. I mean, he has got an incredible schedule. But, you know, looking at his looking at his numbers from last year, you know, minus two games, it looks like Rocky River was right there in every single game. And if they could turn that corner, you know, they're fun to watch on film. And I'm excited to see what they can do this year. That's a great point, Coach. Um, they are they are facing a heck of a gauntlet coming out and then trying to get conditioned with helmets and everything is, is super important. Uh, we want to shout out, you see the comment on the screen here, Keith Wilkes, a coaching legend, um, you know, retired recently, um, ton of wins throughout his career. Um, thanks for watching, Coach. It is a, it's a testament and an honor to, you know, have you, you know, sit down and watch our show. Uh, even you could be doing anything in the world right now. You chose to sit down and watch Football Focus Weekly. That that means a lot to us. And um, Coach Josh Kroll wants something, uh, say something right here. 
man, Coach Wilkes, man, legend, man, Western Salem legend, Coach Wilkes. Man, I, I grew up grew up watching you, Coach. Coach, man, uh, and shout out to Coach Gray as well. But man, when you have a legend come on, man, I, uh, literally inside of my house, plenty Saturdays, man, was just great conversations about the great job you did at Carver High School, man. So, Coach Wilkes, man, thank you for all the legacy, the legacy that you left behind, man, and the impact that you had directly on my family, and just being an excellent coach, man, stand up guy, stand up gentleman, man, and I know my grandfather who past a few years, a couple years ago, man, he was a huge fan of yours, man. He was a huge fan of yours, Coach. Thank you so much, man. And we see Coach Wilk saying thank you. Uh, no, thank you, Coach, for all the years you gave us in high school football. Uh, but now, no further ado, we're going to bring on a legendary head coach here in uh, Charlotte um, and, and really, honestly, the state of North Carolina, um, Multiple championships, won state championships, conference championships. I mean, got multiple players in the NFL um, and just a, a all around a great guy to talk to. Um, I love, you know, visiting with him and, you know, seeing him out around town and just catching up and talking with him. Um, and that man is uh, Butler head coach Brian Hales. We're going to bring him on here right now. All right. Coach. All right. We good. You hear me? Yeah, yeah, we're good, Coach. How you doing, man? Good, good. I, I, I'm learning my new middle name is Technical Difficulties. Um, <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm not the best at this stuff, but I've absolutely learned through the whole process here that <clears throat> you need to be good at these meetings and good on camera. So <laughs> here I am, man, giving it my best effort from the garage. Man, you're doing great. You're doing you sound great. <laughs> I mean, hey, you got it nailed down in my in my opinion. Hey, good to me. Well, I'll tell you what, my dog is gonna be plenty happy once we do go back to work because he seems to be coming with that leash in the morning and he's hiding for cover. We are, <laughs> we are out there walking. We're up we're up to like six, seven miles a day now. Good. It's, uh, it's ridiculous. <laughs> good stuff, man. Good stuff. So uh once again, I appreciate you coming on tonight. Um, I'm gonna jump right into it. I've been asking the other coaches. Um, you know, we saw the state move into phase two. Um, they're allowing now shared equipment, most notably footballs, uh, but still keeping the players in the pods and limiting the amount of kids that can be outside and inside. Uh, so in your opinion, should CMS allow us to practice football right now? Um, it by practice, if you mean going out and working out and, and, and doing the things that we had planned on, you know, kind of unveiling or going to, um, July the 6th, and yeah, I do think so. Um, I mean, when you look around the state, what's happened with the other schools, um, you know, there really doesn't seem to be many cases showing up, you know, as far as, you know, the crews that are working out right now. And, um, you know, so I think that's pretty encouraging. But, um, you know, I tell you, these kids are ready to be outside. Um, you know, I did a camp this past weekend. It was a small camp, kind of a socially distant one. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of the younger kids involved. And, um, Man, just to see these kids get outside and, and be part of something and just, you know, the, the way their spirits elevated and everything and just to talk to some of the parents. It's, um, I mean, it's it, it's time for these kids to get outside. I totally agree, man. I mean, we see kids, you know, doing the camps. We saw the VTO camp. We've got the uh, Carolina Experience camp and some of the other stuff going on. Uh, we had the, the seven on seven stuff before that. I mean, what are your thoughts on that? Um, do you tell your players it's okay to participate in those kind of things, or uh, do you tell them to kind of just chill out? I mean, it, it's whatever them and their families think, in my opinion, um, you know, at this point. And, and I heard Coach Chadwick talking earlier that, you know, normally this time of the year, that's not something, you know, as head coaches would be encouraging. But, you know, obviously, you know, in these days and in these times, um, you know, especially with the uncertainty looking forward to the fall, and, you know, you start taking account some of these kids that, um, you know, are going into the senior years and trying to get as much exposure as possible that, um, no, absolutely. I mean, take advantage of these opportunities, um, you know, as long as everybody's doing it safely. I, I agree. I agree. I mean, they got to get they got to get some kind of conditioning and practice in somehow. And I mean, we can't do it through the school system, at least in a camp. It's somewhat controlled. So, oh, um, no doubt. No doubt. And, and I do think it's going to get to a point that, um, you, you know, once they do decide, you know, and again, being optimistic here that um, mm -hmm. we are going to get to go ahead and play at some point. And 
um, you know, it, it's going to take some time to get these guys ready. You know, and I'm not talking about the Parrish Metzgers and the Gary McDougals and the guys that are out and working and doing all that stuff. It may yeah. take those guys three weeks to get game ready. Um, yeah. Yeah. But when you're talking about kids, especially, you know, these rising ninth graders and, you know, we may get some kids coming out for the first time in that. And it's yeah. going to take some time to get these guys ready to play in a football game. So, sure. no, I think as soon as we could get out there, we got to get out there. Absolutely, Coach. Absolutely. Man, um, we did the coaching legends thing. Uh, we talked with Steve Shaughnessy. Um, <laughs> obviously, you know, you've worked with him a little bit. <laughs> and we talked to Bill Geiler, who you've coached against a little bit. Uh, what did you think about that? And what are your thoughts on the rivalry with uh, Independence that, you know, is obviously one of the best in the city? Mm, um, gosh, how much time do we have? Because if we're talking about Shaughnessy, <laughs> you won't. <laughs> uh, I'm telling you, I got nowhere to go, obviously. So, um, you know, we could do this all August. But, um, no, I'm telling you, um, you know, when I got hired at Butler, and this was June, I guess July maybe, of 2004, um, you know, and it was like a Thursday, I think. And Coach Newsom's like, all right, you know, we're leaving to go to team camp on, you know, Sunday, I believe it was, and um, going up to going up to NC State. I'm going to have you right up there with Coach Shaughnessy. Now, I had coached two years previously over Providence Day. So I was, you know, familiar with the Butler program, of course. But, um, you know, I'd obviously heard quite a bit about Coach Shaughnessy. So, you know, that was really my first experience with him was a two-and-a-half, three-hour ride up to Raleigh. And, um Man, I, I'm telling you, like, we just hit it off. Uh, you know, I just felt so, so easily and just so naturally. And then, you know, I, I think for me personally, the best thing that I've ever done as a football coach and, and for my career was I spent two seasons coaching defensive line under Coach Thomason. And, you know, if you ask me, if you want to be, a, a, you know, a, a good to great offensive coordinator, you better spend some time coaching defense. And, you know, vice versa. If you want to be a great D coordinator, coach some offense. And, you know, and especially to do it under a guy like Steve where he's not just coaching defense. I mean, he's teaching defense. He's teaching how to break apart an offense. And, you know, obviously he's teaching the kids and working to get the kids ready. But, you know, I certainly sat back and took my share, my you know, my fair share of notes. And, you know, it's just such a blessing to coach under Steve. Um, you know, not just those two years, but then – you know, when I came back over to the offensive side of the ball and, you know, Mike allowed me to be the offense coordinator, just going up against his defenses at practice every day. Um, I mean, you got to be, you got to be ready. You got to have a plan ready to go for Pascal. You got to have a plan ready, you know, for inside run and for team. And so, I mean, it's just that competition every day. And it just, it, it, I feel like it brought the best out of me. And I can never thank Coach Johnson enough for the impact he had on my career. Good stuff, man. Good stuff. I mean, just talking with him was was just gold. I mean, I, mm -hmm. yeah, it was it was awesome. He's a great man. He's a oh, great the best. The uh, best. So I'm gonna bring up, you know, the Queen City Senior Bowl uh, because mm -hmm. you are the first <laughs> to ever win the Queen City Senior Bowl. Uh, mm -hmm. in um, talk about that experience and and how how cool it was for you. Well, um, and I don't know if I ever even told you this, but I was that close to not coaching in the game. Um, I did not you know. know. You didn't. Um, you know, I, we had already talked. I'd already accepted. We had already had our first um, first round of meeting, maybe our first two rounds of meetings. And I got a phone call um, on a Monday afternoon from a representative from the Cleveland Browns. And they were doing a thank you coach program um, on the field um in a weekend in december and uh, you know whether you know kendall lamb who oh. you know played for us on our 2009 state championship team he was playing with cleveland last year mm -hmm. so i got an invite to go up to this thing in cleveland and you know i i, I played in, and went to school at kent state so it's you know 35 40 miles down the road and you know oh. so many friends in cleveland and um just so appreciative of kendall and all that i thought about it and you know, I kind of went back and forth for about a half an hour, you know, a half an hour on it. And um, in, in fact, I told the team this before we went out onto the field that Saturday afternoon that, um, you know, I had a chance to be up in Cleveland, Ohio. And, you know, at that particular time, we'd be down in Canton at the Hall of Fame and I'd be going on the field on Saturday but or on Sunday. 
But, um, you know, for a chance to take part in that game, um, you know, the very first of them especially, um, you know, and, and that was one thing I wanted to get across to the kids is, you know, it, it's a special moment now. But five years from now, 10 years from now, when, you know, this thing is just, you know, and the roots are deep and, it, you know, everybody's, you know, just just wanting to play in that game. You know, we're going to be able to say we were part of it. We were the first crew that was out there. So, I mean, to me, it was just just one of the highlights of my career was, you know, being able to be in that game. And then, you know, just the experience of working with the coaches. I mean, I like just enjoyed myself that, you know, that not just that entire week, but. Um, you know, especially on Saturday with, you know, with Jamel running the defense and, and, and those guys over there and, and Joe running the offense. And you know, I just got to step back and, and kind of enjoy it. And um, it just and I can never thank you guys enough for putting that on and, you know, including me with that. But, man, that was that was such a great experience. And I hope everybody in Charlotte gets a chance to experience it. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. And, and I hope that we're able to do it again this year um, with everything going on. So um, good stuff, man. So now uh, we had uh, several of your players on our preseason all-conference team. Uh, mm -hmm. We had uh, Leo Arredondo uh, on the offensive line, mm -hmm. uh, Bryce Jackson on D-line. Um, we had Jake Snap as our uh, defensive specialist kind of moves around the field. And then A.J. Starks, um, your, your great linebacker. Mm -hmm. uh, talk about, you know, those kids and then some other kids that are uh, really going to stand out for you this year. Well, no, certainly those guys, I, I mean, we're expecting big things out of them this year. Um, you, you know, and understand when I say this year, I'm being optimistic and I'm going to assume everything's going to go well. But, um, <laughs> you, you know, certainly, you know, starting with Leo, um, I mean, the kid's been starting – I'd say Bryce, it's about the fourth or fifth game of his freshman year. So, you know, no one on our roster has played as much football and certainly as much varsity football um, as Leo has. And he's just he's just such a tough kid. And he, it just sets such a tone in, in the way he plays offensive line. And, you know, I know you're a bit of an uh, O-line aficionado yourself. And, Absolutely. you know, you, you love watching, you know, he does. He just put, brings such a, a an aggressiveness and such a mentality to it. It's just – it's contagious and, and you know, all the the other kids feed off of it. Um, so, you know, certainly with Leo, you know, up front on the offensive side of the ball, kind of setting the tone there, but you know, we got Chris Locklear who's going to be back as his second year as a starter. Um, you know, Aaron McKeever is the kid who's going to be moving into the starting lineup this year. And, and if you like Leo, I mean, you're really going to like Aaron as well, because it's the same. It, it's more of the same from an attitude perspective. Um, you know, Chris James is a kid. His younger brother, uh, TJ James, who played for us a few years ago. Um, but he's a kid that we're counting on to help us, you know, up front on, on both sides of the ball, really. Um, you know, and then, you know, you got the big guy over on the defensive side, and Bryce. Um, you know, and again, he's going to be back. And he would have been, you know, this would have been his third year as a starter. Um, but he, he got hurt in his first game his freshman year. Um kind of had a little knee deal and knocked him out for a little while. But um, so, you know, he's coming back with a ton of experience. And you mentioned A.J. Stark playing linebacker. But, um, you know, in addition to A.J. playing linebacker, you got Blake Moore, um, you know, who did quite a few good things for us last year as well. So, you know, we're going to be counting on Blake to, you know, hold down one of those linebacker spots as well probably. Um, but then the back end of the defense, real excited about that as well. Um you know, I mentioned Gary McDougal the other day, and he's just, you know, again, he's just, and all these guys are just such great kids. They're such hard workers, and but Garen's out there, and, um, you know, he, he's out, he's doing the camps, and he's playing all that stuff, and it looks great. But, um, you know, back there with him uh, is, is Corey Hunter, and Corey's a kid who really started to come on, um, you know, especially late in the year last year. That's big plays, uh, you know, some turnovers in the, uh, you know, the game against the little eye late in the year, or I think about halfway through October. But, um, you know, but he did some great things for us. Um, you know, we're expecting Alex Edwards to, you know, really make his name known on the varsity level this year on Friday night. So, um, you know, I think the only crew we didn't really talk about is the skill guys on offense. And, you know, just so excited to have Parrish back um, his second year as a starter. Um, you know, our offense and, you know, to me, it's a simple offense, but, you know, I've been in it most of my life. So, um, you know, I guess to me it is, but it could be a little difficult to pick up. But I think Parrish did a great job last year 
with what we gave them. But, you know, this year I think we'll really be able to, you know, kind of open up all those pages and, you know, really take advantage of, you know, some of the guys that we got on the outside as far as Ty Moore and, you know, Makai Tate and Jalen Taylor's a kid who, you know, we think is going to really help us out this year. And, you know, Isaiah Tramp, but, you, you know, I think the one big name, and I didn't really mention him on defense, but he's going to factor in on the defensive side again this year, and he's going to help us on offense, is Isaiah Lawson. And, and Isaiah's a kid, he's got, you know, a lot of offensive experience with this. Um, but he was, you know, his big physical presence for us in the defensive backfield last fall as well. So, yeah, I agree to see big things out of Isaiah Lawson this year also. It's good stuff, Coach. Um, you know, I, I like what you said about your quarterback, Parrish uh, Metzger, and opening things up because um, all of us on the panel agree you are one of the best offensive play callers uh, in the state of North Carolina. And, you know, I've told you this before. It, it's fun to watch your offenses operate, all the shifts and motions and formations. <laughs> um, I, I know I'm being serious, Coach. I mean, it, it is a joy <laughs> to watch how you – play with matchups and take advantage of things. So mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to be excited to see that uh, this year. And, and one other thing I want to say, your uh, comment on the little lie was, uh, you know, pretty. pretty <laughs> <laughs> well, we were supposed to talk about that rivalry a little bit. And I kind of skipped <laughs> over it, I guess. And it What's wasn't intentional. It wasn't intentional. Um, but it, yeah, that, that's who they are. And that's who they will be for me. And it's just, you know, it goes back, like I said, it goes back to 2004. Um, Heck, I started at Butler three or four years before I sent my first text message, I think. But, um, you know, I got there, and it was actually Coach Kyler's first year. It was that 2004 crew of monsters they had over there, and they beat everybody, you know, by 60, 70 points. And, you know, Joe Cox has set records. And I, in fact, they didn't even have to throw the ball. I, I, they could have lined up, run it at you, put up 50, 60 points, and, and it would have been no problem for them. But, um, you know, that, so that was actually my first time going up against coach Kyler and, you know, going up against independence and, you know, and, and again, we always felt, and, and we will always give independence the respect that, you know, we feel like without independence being who they were, you know, Butler may have got there, but we may not have got there. Um, you know, having them be so good for so long, but having them be so close as well. Um, you know, it's either be engulfed by them or, or, or stand up and go back at them. And, you know, we had a crew of kids that came in, um, you know, as freshmen, my first year there. And, you know, I like to say we were all freshmen together. But, you know, in, included in that group were guys like, you know, Robert Blanton and, and Spencer Adams and Jacob Sherest and, you know, Kenny Bulware. And, and I'm getting excited over here just talking about these guys because, um, you know, unfortunately, they weren't there long enough to get the benefit of the state championship rings. But without those guys saying enough is enough um, and, and changing things, you know, themselves and taking it upon themselves, um, you know, we, we may not, none of us may have had state championship rings. So, you know, and, and it's awesome that, you know, this past weekend, Anthony McGill, who uh, officer Anthony McGill, who was also in that class, um, he, um, you know, he, he's got very, um, very much involved in the community involvement and, this past weekend, he had a kickball tournament out of Mara, and they had a Butler football alumni team. And I mean, gosh, Pep, like the, the guys that were out there, you know, I mean, you're talking, you know, Jared Boykin and Christian LeMay were out there and, um, you know, guys, you know, that kind of generation to, you know, guys that just graduated this past year, like CJ Trotty and Jordan Bratton and, you know, Makai Tate, who's a rising senior is out there. And, I mean, heck, even the two guys that were umpires played for us. And it's just, it just makes you feel so good that, you know, these guys worked so hard together for so long and were able to push Butler High School to heights that, you know, maybe we didn't even imagine back then. But, you know, because of them and just to see what they're doing within the community now and every day, it's just, it, it just makes you proud and it feels like you were in the right place for all these years. Amen. Well said, man. And you mentioned some names that brought back some memories from me. <laughs> <laughs> watching you, you guys on, you know, the highlight shows and winning the championships. And, um, you know, it, it's just it's awesome, awesome stuff, man. Uh, Coach, man, this was great. And, um, you know, I appreciate you coming on and and hopefully, you know, I'm able to come over there like I do every year during practice. <laughs> Heck yeah, man. Heck yeah, come on out. Uh, get your screwdriver. Um, we'll pull some string. You can help us paint some practice fields, man. Yeah, come on. 
Come on, you Mo. You always have opportunities, buddy. Always. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know if my patience is good for that anymore. But uh, <laughs> oh, that's all right. That's all right. We've had all kinds out there. We had all kinds out there, Peyton. Some of them will identify themselves eventually. <laughs> no, I love it, man. They, and that's the thing. You know, and that's it. I've talked to the kids about it before that, um, mm-hmm. you know, I coach because I don't ever want to grow up. Like, I, I just – being in the locker room atmosphere and, you know, yeah. whether it's you're with the team or, or you're with the assist, you know, you're with the coaches or, you know, coming on to something like this and, you know, come, coming on after those guys, it's just – that locker room atmosphere, man, you just, you can't. I mean, there's nothing you can do to replicate it. And, you know, just just so many great relationships comes of it. So many great things come of it that, you know, hopefully things clear up and we get back out there and, you know, everybody's getting to experience it too. Amen. Amen. Uh, Coach, once again, this was awesome. I uh, appreciate you coming on. And um, hopefully I'll see you soon, man, out on the field. You got it, Pep. Thanks for having me on. Guys, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Keep it up. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you, coach. All right, bud. We'll see you. All right. So that was coach Brian Hales from Butler. Um, obviously some <laughs> great comments on the rivalry with, uh, as he calls them, the little eye <laughs> at independence. I know we might have some comments from some independence people, uh, you know, here in a little bit, uh, coach Jupiter Wilson from, uh, Hickory Ridge comment, good stuff from coach Hales. Um, you know, we'll have coach Wilson on here soon. I promise coach, um, that hold me to it. <laughs> uh, we got a comment on, uh, number 52 is a big physical young man. Absolutely. Um, that's a uh, big, uh, Leo Aradondo there on the offensive line. Um, we're going to bring the, uh, the crew back that, that we have, we, we playing a little shorthanded right now, but we're going to bring back who we got. Um, any thoughts on what Coach Hale said, guys? Hey, you went for a surprise with that um that other lineman he got. That look, that mean <laughs> that boy is mean. He played JV last year. I know he, you talking about. He tore my JV boy. He had one of my kids. I I had to yell at one of my kids and say, "You know, man, I'm gonna hit that boy in the mouth." I was just boy. That boy mean. He he was a grown man. He was a man. Amongst boys, and it was it's, it's very good to see that my guys, you know, he had two prominent guys over there. They got Paris and um, um, Jake Snapping. You see how he didn't tell y'all the secret sauce when he don't do with Jake Snap because that's a Swiss Army knife. But Paris, Paris, a big game player, and I had to say it because he would have sent me an IG comment or he would have DM me on Twitter and he would have been yelling at me, say, Coach, why you talk me up? But now nah, Paris Mesher is a ball player, he's tough. He's a blue collar worker, man. He 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 like he, somebody you think plays for Pittsburgh. He puts his hard hat on and go to work. He's a tough kid. I love him. Say out to Parish. Good stuff, man. Good stuff. Uh mess it up here. All right. <laughs> hey, that comment I said coming true now, fellas. <laughs> uh any other thoughts on what Coach Hales had to say, guys? The unbalanced guy, man. Great guy, man. Great guy. Great guy. North Carolina legend, offensive legend, obviously. As an offensive guy, you know, at some point you study Coach Hills and what he does, man, and how he does it. So you don't he, watch no don't watch no Providence film against, against us. <laughs> brother, brother, brother. <laughs> you ain't over Unbalanced. There. You ain't over there no more. <laughs> so I'm gonna start watching the film. We're going forward. No offense. A lot of love over there in Providence. I'm going to start going for 2020 going forward. <laughs> All right. So the guys That's are going to Providence, man. Much love to man. They've been sitting for a while, so we're going to give them something to do. All right. So now we're going to jump into everyone's favorite segment on CFI's Football Focus Weekly because it's the only segment that we have right now, and it's called Sound Off. All right, so on sound off, if you hadn't watched this before, um, everyone on the panel gets a chance to sound off on anything in the world. Uh, It doesn't have to be high school football related. It can be um, pop culture. It can be music. uh, It can be anything. So always on sound off, we start off with the juice man, and that's Coach Josh Kroll. Coach Kroll, go ahead and sound off. Juice man in the building, sound off for this week. I got two of them. My first one 
is a little bit on the negative side. Dwayne Wade, come on in the sound off, man. Uh, Dwayne Wade had some comments. I know the NBA is starting to get back rolling. And uh, Dwayne Wade was on the show that they're doing right now, getting ready for the season. And Dwayne Wade gave the most half ended compliment I've ever heard anybody give. And everybody that, that comes on this show knows I waved the flag, that HBCU flag, proudly. Don't only have to be North Carolina Central University. Well, I'm a proud eagle. It don't have to be that school down the highway that's happened to be named North Carolina A&T. But I wave the flag very proudly. But Dwayne Wade, man, I got come on, man. In the words, of my boy, then my guy, Coach McClamrock, come on, man, come on, man. That just you just gave the most half in the compliment to HBCUs. Then it wasn't even the truth. It wasn't any truth in it at all. And then you you just not keeping in mind, man. You made comments about. You know, the amount of television, how that has an effect on uh, draft picks. Man, come on, man. Let's go right back to last year's draft in the NBA, man. Come on, man. You're talking about the rookie of the year came from a small school, man. He came from Murray State, man. Murray State in the same conference as another HBCU. Tennessee State is in the same conference as Murray State, man. This kid probably going to win rookie of the year. He came from a small conference. And you can go back. I went back and looked the last five years. Man, I don't even got time to focus on my second one, man. Dwayne Wade, man, bring your tail on this side sound off. My problem was with you this week, man. I we normally stay a little positive, but this week I had to come at the way, man. I, I ain't like how he said that. All Bro, right. Away. Now, Coach Crow's negative on sound off. We got a problem. Yeah. But now, now we're going to go to the, the, to the uh, Zen master, <laughs> Coach Billups. Sound off. Ain't going to be the Zen master today. So my problem is with EA Sports. If you don't fix that outside zone glitch, we don't have a problem. I was in a heated game the other night. And that dude kept running outside zone. I saw it there. And why I see who I thought I had to check and make sure it was not Heinz Ward. He cleaked my outside linebacker. I said, Jesus, who is this kid? I paused the game. Look, I didn't know who he was. Then I'm out there setting my defense. You know, Coach Bill, you don't say you're a guru or nothing. If y'all don't fix that darn drag glitch and these out glitches, I'm going to have a problem. I can't get no switch car. I got to go play corner. I got to go play safety because they have run these crosses. And then I got to jump on the other cross, and then my corner, who is the CPU, going to jump the other one. Now, when I play, and I call the same play, miraculously, you making the damn switch. <laughs> you got some beef with Coach Billups? You do. You need it. Coach Billups, underscore DB, and we got our conversation. But I see one more darn wide receiver block, pin and pulling like a darn guard and tackle combo again. You ain't getting my fifty nine ninety nine. <laughs> All right, so we yeah we got some problems with Madden. We absolutely do, and uh, I sounded off on that a couple weeks ago. But yeah, uh, Coach Billups is not very happy with his defense. Um, I think we need a little more practice time, Coach, on the defensive adjustments. No, uh, we're going to playoffs. <laughs> we're going to go to Brandon Black, CFI producer. Brandon, sound off. Well, I'm going to continue on with the with the NFL theme there. Um, we're going to go with, with, with actual football in real life. And I'm kind of just wondering, with the way things are going, what kind of NFL season we'll actually have. I mean, you know, we've already said, hey, no preseason. So, you know, that already dampens the, you know, the outlook for a lot of rookies. Um, guys are just opting out. They're more concerned with keeping their family safe, keeping themselves safe, their own health. Um, you know, the Chiefs O lineman said he's gonna work. He's no, he's actually a practicing doctor. Um, you got guys just opting out, so you know that can mean a lot of opportunity for guys that maybe wouldn't play as much to now get their shine, maybe. Um, so I'm just wondering, are we gonna have like a lot of backup guys in with empty stadiums, no crowd? How's it just gonna be? Very interesting to see how this plays out, you know, and it seems like every day we get someone opting out or some some sort of rule change or something. So really curious to see how this is going to play out. 
It's well said, man. Um, there's a lot to be said about, you know, the NFL players opting out because of COVID-19. We saw the kid from uh, Virginia Tech opt out. Uh, the uh, very talented corner is going to be a first-round pick, making a business decision. Um, well, that's a good point. Uh, you know, last week I talked about CMS, um, lack of communication, uh, lack of, you know, direction. And it was, you know, it, it got a lot of attention. And it was, you know, it, I think it, it kind of inspired him to come out on the other show and, and show up and try to say something. But this week I got a, a different sound off. Um, so I, I'm going to share the, the fact that, you know, I, I have, you know, gone into a single status and um, starting to think about entering the, the dating world again. And um, it, it's been a long time, you know, since you entered those waters. And um, it's a lot different. It's been about five years. And, you know, you, you, there's different ways of getting out there and, and trying to find someone that may be a little special for you. And, um, you know, the, all these apps and Tinder and OK Cupid and all that stuff. Um, I, I, don't, I don't know what I'm doing. So if there's anyone out there that can help Pet Man out, and um, you know, see what's going on out here in the world of dating. Um, I'd welcome your advice. I got you, big dog. Right. I'm laughing in the background, so we're gonna bring them back. <laughs> I got you, big dog. You ain't get out there, bingo. Okay. Hey, we got hey. 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 All, the social, you know, all the social media sites was in Congress today. <laughs> Oh, they should have brought Tinder in there too, my God. They Pep out there swiping right and left. Okay, Pep. <laughs> <laughs> we got to do better. We got to do better than this. Come on, man. We need some real information out here. I just can't look at that. We got to do better than that. Pep out there swiping left and right. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Oh, that's the one. That's the one. <laughs> We're talking about what happened. All right. So on the hey, south, hey Brandon is just doing this right. Swipe, swipe. Yeah, we're, we're swiping left on that top. We're moving on. All right. So we got some great players to talk about. Um, yes, yes, we do. So we got quarterbacks and running backs. Uh, Coach Crow, go ahead and break those guys down for us. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hey, man. Uh, great conference here. Uh, one of the best conferences, as I, I always talk about. Uh, Charlotte being. One of the best areas for high school football in the South, uh, possibly in the country. But we started off, you know, at the quarterback position, Drake May, you know, uh, uh, no brainer, <laughs> no brainer. Uh, but what I did was, uh, you know, I kind of threw some some kids to watch on there, man. Um, on McCown, man, uh, I, I know you, I know you waiting, young fella. You know, just wait your turn, man. I'm, I'm glad that you are, you know, standing there, and staying loyal. Um, just wait your turn, man. When your time comes, man, show the world. But another kid, man, and I got to shout out my guy, Coach Brad Van Horn, offense coordinator over at Independence, man. You got a kid over there, Cayman Carson. I've had a chance to go and watch a little bit of this kid's film, man. I think he's going to be pretty darn good. Um, and so that's just, you know, just kind of trying to highlight some of the guys that, you know, at the quarterback position that are, you know, behind the radar. You know, some guys may know about them, some guys may not. Some of the kids may not even have any offers, but kid Cayman Carson, man. Really good kid, man. I'm going to look forward to seeing what he does in that offense. Uh, on the running back side, Davion Nelson, independence running back. <laughs> Goes without saying. He's almost just as obvious as the Drake May pick. 216 carries, 1,400 rushing yards, 14 touchdowns. Dude, the kid even threw three touchdowns. He even threw three touchdowns. I mean, this kid is a touchdown machine. Uh, in the film, man, this kid's film – Speaks much louder than even his stats, man. This kid is incredible, man. I, I saw one on there. He broke a 96 yarder, 97 yarder on his field or something like that. It was crazy, man. It was, this kid is the real deal. Brandon Perry, Porter Ridge. Uh, this kid is very, very explosive. Uh, according to the stats, kid had another thousand, another kid with a thousand yard rushing season. Great kid, uh, very explosive in between the tackles, can read the tackles a little bit more. Just want to see him, you know, I, I want to see you take that next level. Young fella, you know, and be a little more explosive, but great kid. Kid to watch in the conference. Uh, you know, I'm just going to say Myers Park running back by committee. You know, there's some running backs that are over there that, you know, even coach didn't even say. And I think the reason why he didn't say it is because, you know, he kind of want to keep it under wraps, you know, until they get a chance to see what's going to happen. But the kid Redfern, senior Redfern over there, had a chance to watch his film. Kid's the real deal. And they got some other backs that they can run by committee over there. So that's quarterbacks running back, man. Very good, very good. So, 
Um, thoughts on that? I got a few things to say on the quarterback position. Obviously, Drake May was. I, uh, I definitely got something to say. Yeah, mm-hmm. let, let me let me speak on the quarterbacks, and I'll, I'll let you go, Coach. Mm-hmm. So, Arnold Taylor, Independence, another talented kid. Um, <laughs> I, I, you said it, Arnold. Him. Yeah, I've interviewed him. Um, you know, he got hurt. You know, uh, middle of last season, um, they had to make some things. You know, change some things for the offense to uh, keep it going. But um, I think if he didn't get hurt, um, they had a chance to. You know, maybe you know, pulling up in that first round uh, playoff game, they might've had a better seed if they could have won a, a couple of those games they lost. Um, Paris Metzger, of course, at Butler, Coach Hales talked about him, his second year in that offense. We've seen Butler quarterbacks in their second year make a big jump under his tutelage throughout the years. And in the way Paris has been looking in seven-on-seven seven competition and in camps um, has been very impressive. So I expected a big jump from him this year. And then a kid at Hickory Ridge, Alex Bentley, uh, watched him on JV last year. A left-handed kid. Moves around, yeah, moves around uh, really well. He's accurate with the football. Uh, he He's – they got some – like um, I think it was Coach Gray that was talking about how, you know, Hickory Ridge just slept on a little bit. They got some ballers up there, and, he, and he's one of them in that uh, 22 class. It's going to make some noise. Uh, go ahead, Coach Billups. Um, just like um, Pep just said, Paris, don't sleep on Paris, man. Paris a dog. You yeah. know, when he was his top, his little tenure at Providence, Paris competes. He he don't step, he don't back down. He is uh, he's the big bad wolf. He ain't, he ain't getting nobody hunting him. He hunting people. Do they um, got a little bit around around them, coach? They got some pieces. Um, around. Do they have some pieces around them over there? I know coach can find a way to make pace pieces. Um, out of do they have? Yes, the uh, like. You know, everybody know he got now that he got snapped. I don't know if Snap gonna play defense or offense, but Jay mm-hmm. Snap one of the most dynamic players in Charlotte Mecklenburg. He just yeah. his name's not out there. Well, he is out there. You know, he did a lot of damage at Providence, but him and the Brian Hills offense that because you got a kid who can play wide receiver and running back. You know, it's and he's a he's a really good corner. We couldn't play him at corner at Providence because in our defense we need a great. Playmaker at free safety. That's why he played free safety. But he's one of the best corners because you know when he went to um the Nike camp the year when um all the big name receivers were there he showed out. Um, Hickory Ridge got a running back over there. It got Hickory Ridge got about two running backs that can run. Um, you know you just can't really count. I I told Juke he was on like what I was gonna say. So I'm not gonna say too much about Hickory Ridge. Until we get our preseason um, ranking, but um, Hickory Ridge is is a dangerous. They're a blue collar team. I mm-hmm. love blue collar team. They were smacky in the mouth, and he got backs, and he got one of the means old lines in in that conference. That's saying a lot because you got Butler and Myers Park, and you got Rocky River. But yep. um, yeah, it's some it's some quarterback talent. You know, Myers Park has the talent, but and he got talent. You know, Arnold, and then even the backup is pretty is really good. Paris is he carried that Butler team, you know, <laughs> but they got enough, they got a playmaker back there too, another one. And Rocky River, I'm pretty sure they got somebody. It, you just it, it's, it's too much talent in Charlotte. It just there's a lot of talent in Charlotte. You can't you can't really say this this guy, this guy, you know, Drake May is the alpha, but it's talent, you know. I like the picks, you know, independence running back. He's a man child, he's a freak. And Porter Ridge, it's a I have not watched the film on the camp. I really want to watch it because Speed. that's the, yeah, Speed. yeah, and that kind of offense they play in, you gonna you don't get you don't get your carries and you don't get your yards. So it's impressive. So yeah, quiet as kept. I, I had a chance to watch the film against them and uh, against Hickory Ridge last year. I saw mm-hmm. the kid inside the five. Man, he made a move on the kid inside the five. Quick spin move to try to get inside. I mean, they, oh, I'm talking quick spin move. Right off, the, I mean, he's a good kid, man. He's a really, really b- good ball player, man. So you know, you know, go down the Indian trail, go check him out a little bit. Hey, yeah. you, you never heard me say this, but no cap juice. I, I will, um, I will agree with you. Done deal. Done deal. Done deal. <laughs> All right, good deal, good deal. All right, so Coach Billups, you got the receivers and the athlete here on our list. What you got on it? I don't get to listen in front of me, but 
<laughs> um, <laughs> all right, so we'll go through it. <laughs> yeah, go through it first. You know, get... TV. Yeah, I was working all day. I'm sorry, guys. Most <laughs> people do his homework, so we got it. That's a scene. no. I, I did. I left my notebook at, at work. <laughs> Fetch him work me a lot. You gotta write my dog. All right, so we got Christian Hamilton and Hickory Ridge, multiple D1 offers, just incredible talent. Uh, we interviewed him uh, a couple weeks back. Um, you know, for all the talent and the offers that he has, he's not, you know, the most um, boisterous kid. He doesn't speak out the spotlight. Uh, he's pretty reserved, but um, you can tell he's confident in his ability. Um, you know, the, the sky's the limit for him. Um, he's but got most of them kids at Hickory Ridge. <laughs> yeah. they, they, they reflect their leadership. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Uh, Jordan Blau, Coach Chadwick mentioned him earlier. Well, we talked about Brandon Perry with speed. Jordan Blau, I mean, good gracious. Uh, he was the fastest man at uh, several camps. Um, you know, obviously, he's got the lineage with his father, Dre Blau, coached up in North Carolina. Um, you know, I think it's going to be a huge season for him with Drake May pulling the trigger at Myers Park. Um, Antoine Collins, uh, slot receiver, uh, Rocky River. I'm very impressed with him. I saw him when they played Hickory Ridge up at uh, UNC Charlotte last year. Shifty, quick, in and out of his cuts, gets the ball into space. Um, dynamic, makes people miss. Um, just an incredible athlete at that slot position. And then a name that I'm sure most people don't know, um, but we went to Garinger. And saw them twice last year, and this young man showed out, and he made all conference last year. They state um, interviewed him, and you know he said in his interview that you know people try to tell him to leave Garinger, and to his credit, he said he wants to be a part of trying to help you know turn that around. And I mean, anyone that's willing to stick around in these times where you see so much movement, I, I have to shout you out. Um, uh, for his game, he's about six foot. And he's very strong. Um, mm -hmm. Good moves, and he gets the ball in his hands. Um, and you know, he's the number one, number two, and number three target. You know, over there uh, as far as getting the football. And when you're able to still produce under those kind of circumstances, you are really a special player. Yeah. Right on, young fellow. Right on. I, and, uh, I think. Go ahead, coach. You, you've nailed everything on the um, head with the wide receivers and the athletes. You know. Me being a DB coach, you know, I, I dislike talking about the pretty boys on the offensive side, but um that's why you ain't had a lift. I I could go I could go get my I could go get the um back phone and go get the list. He burned the list. It hurt, but it's all right. It's all right. I'm I'm a warrior. But Jordan Bly is probably one of the top receivers in that conference. Um yeah. I will say little Reese is probably gonna be Pretty dangerous, and I think Coach Chad was upset with you that you told everybody about Little yeah. Reese because you didn't play that JV. You don't know about Little Reese, but yeah, he's pretty good. Know, I um, <laughs> Coach McFadden does a great job out there. Shout out to my boy DJ. You know, um, I love what he do over there at Mars Park. I hate what he did to me when we played Mars Park. I'm glad I don't got to play Mars Park this year because <laughs> it just got ugly. Um, the receiver at Hickory Ridge, I got to go get him in a scrimmage. Um, He's an athlete. He's very, very aggressive. I got to see the Garinger kid. He's pretty good. You know, it's, you know, everybody don't sleep on Garinger. They got talent. You know, it just, no. they just got to get it rolling. They got to play so many young guys. It, it's, yeah. It sucks when you got to play freshmen early and they're not really. Right. But um, it's some talent, you know, some great, great list, man. I, I, I respect that. I got some 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 doubts when you bring the DB list up, though. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So then the athlete um, is Jacob Newman. And, you know, you heard Coach Chadwick talk about him earlier, um, saying that he's probably going to lead the team in touches. So mm -hmm. that, that really says a lot for what, uh, you know, Jacob Newman is going to do in that Myers Park offense. And with all the talent over there, for him, for coach to come out and say that, that tells you this kid is really special. He's really dynamic. Um, seeing the film on him last year and then seeing him live uh, when they played Porter Ridge, um, I can see why. I mean, when he gets the ball in space, um, it's it's dangerous. It's dangerous. And I'm excited to see this kid that, that Coach Bill was talking about that's over at, at Butler. I'm excited to see that kid, man. I want to see what that kid can do. In that Snap. Yeah, I want to see the kid, man. I got you know you know my favorite thing to tell you is bring your popcorn. 
All right. All right. Well, I'm going to bring my popcorn. Hey, hey Pam, I'll tell you, this is one of the most underrated. I'm not saying this just because I coached the kid. He didn't need he didn't need me. It's, it's two players at Providence when I came over and started coaching that secondary. They didn't need me to say nothing. Number one and number six. Jake Snap and Dwayne Gisson there are, are very talented. Jake Snap is a playmaker. He, he's a Tyreek Hill. He don't have the speed like Tyreek Hill, but he's shifty. He'll cut you up. He'll cut you up. And um he just needs to be in the right opportunity. He, you know, I would have loved for him to stay at Providence because I think with the way the offense is going to go this year under the second time, you know, second year with Coach Johnson, it would have got – he would have been very di – more dynamic because we bring up – they're bringing up some – I can't say it. But they're bringing up some more talent, and we don't, they don't be able to move that ball around. But him with all the other weapons – because Butler always got a back. Because yeah. I think when um the big back went down, they still got the shifty back. He, he's coming back. This is going to be his senior year. And – just bring your popcorn. That O line is nasty. And now, now that he confirmed to everybody that he bring that rising temporary up to varsity, mm -hmm. you got two mean guards. It just, whew. Mm. Whew. I'm forward to seeing it, man. You know, hopefully, we get some darn football if I get a chance to see it. But my, like I said, it just it it it's gonna be this conference is very interesting. I think we know who the top dog is, but right. two and three. I I know who my two is. I, I, can't, wait, I can't wait to see what yours is. I can't wait to say what mine is. <laughs> Nonsense. <laughs> Bring your popcorn. All right. I'm going to go get my other phone. I'll be back. <laughs> on the offensive line, the guys are, are really wound up today. Um, on the offensive line, uh, we've got some really talented kids here. Um Cade Goldman at Hickory Ridge. We've seen him pick up several offers of just a big – Big size kid, 6'4", 275, great technician, moves well. Um, I see why he's got all the attention he's got just looking at his film. Uh, Corey on Sharp, we've seen for a couple of years at Rocky River, just a big, mean, tough um, interior lineman. Just love watching him at camps um, in, in person at games. Um, just loves to come off the football and be nasty. Um, Bo Crutcher. Uh, Myers Park, Coach Chad mentioned him earlier, um, played a lot last year as a sophomore, uh, now moving up, you know, still um, getting a lot of good experience now as a junior. A uh, really big size kid, uh, works out hard in the weight room, um, and I love watching him come off the football. That's one of the themes with these guys. They love to come off the football. Uh, you see a lot with, you know, this the zone uh, style. Sometimes you get some linemen that aren't really as aggressive because you're taking your progression with zone steps and everything. But these guys take progression, but they're gaining ground and making contact and driving, which is awesome. Um, Coach Hales talked about Leo Arredondo, just a mean, tough, nasty um, power offensive lineman at guard um, going into his senior year, all-conference player last year, coming back once again. Um, and then Cameron Nichols, um, you know, he paired with Bo Crutcher on the right side offensive line, as Coach Chad mentioned. Um, you know, going to be uh, just great size, 6'4", 300 pounds. Um, I mean, just so many offensive linemen in this league, man. Um, you know, Coach Gray mentioned Gabe Palacios, who could have easily made this list. Um, another really good power offensive lineman, just uh, nasty coming off the football. Um just, just really, really good lineman. Uh, Zaire Falls at Myers Park. I looked at his film. Um, he now he's a, a great technician with his feet. Uh, he played some at left tackle last year. Um, you know, he could have been on the list. Another good size kid at 6'3, 300 plus pounds. Um, I think he's gonna pick up some offers, uh, just based off his film and, um, you know, his footwork. Um, you know, I, I love, you know, looking at offensive linemen, and there were a couple others that. You know, could have easily, you know, made the list, especially from Hickory Ridge. They got a really good offensive lineup there. Um, but we're only, you know, you're only taking five. But um, you know, best offensive line in the conference might might be at Hickory between Hickory Ridge and Myers Park. Just so many kids um that are talented on that list uh right there. And then of course the kicker, Matthew Dennis at Myers Park committed to Wake Forest. Uh Coach Chadwick mentioned earlier he's never missed a field goal. He was eleven for eleven. Um, last year on field goals and in high school, that's uh, just super impressive. Um, and then at punter, we got Riley Stubbs at Hickory Ridge. We interviewed him 
a few weeks back. Um, kid just works. He works and works and works on his craft. Um, you know, put him at punter, but he's a great kicker as well. Um, he's picked up a couple offers. Um, super nice kid. Um, I see why he's got the offers that he does um, out there. So that is our offensive side of the ball right there, along with the special teams. Uh, we're going to go to the defense now. Um, I'm going to start with the defensive lineman, and I'll bring the guys back. Um, Bryce Dixon at Butler. Oh, man, this kid has been a terror the last couple years. Um, number 90, big kid, about 6'3", 280. Uh, loves to push the pocket from the uh, interior. Uh, great uh, get off on the first step pass rush. Um, and then he sheds blocks well in the run game and help, you know, contain his gap. Uh, keeps guys coming from off, uh, coming up on his linebackers. Um, that's probably a big reason why his linebackers on this list um, and AJ Starks. Um, but um, you saw you see him starting to get attention as he should um, at that size, and you know his ability to move, you know, at that size, you know, warrants the attention that he gets. Um, Tyson Clawson at Independence, man, I'm telling you what a uh, dynamic kid this is. Um, great size, um, elite first step. A uh, great pass rusher committed to Charlotte. Um, you know, he comes from a great family. Um, you know, his brother uh, played at Independence and then now is doing well um, after, you know, leaving the school. Um, his father is a, a great guy, um, really supportive. Um, talked to him last year when we were out doing the visits. Um, really well-spoken young man. Uh, sky's the limit for him. Uh, credit for him for staying local. Uh, that's a great get for Charlotte. Um, absolutely. Um, and then at the D tackle position, two big Myers Park guys, uh, Andrew Bookman, uh, Coach Chab mentioned him earlier, three years starter um, on the D line in this conference. Um, <laughs> absolutely deserve to be on the preseason all conference team. Just a stalwart in there. Uh, Jimmy Simpson, you know, Coach Chab mentioned he's the strongest guy on the team. Um, you know, between those two guys, um, they got some inexperience at the linebacker spot, like Coach Chavkin mentioned, but that's going to help protect those guys as they learn and, um, you know, get up to speed. And then, you know, Coach Chavkin mentioned Pot Rose Jordan Tinsley, who easily could have been, you know, a part of this as well. Um, you know, between those three, the Myers Park defensive line, especially on the interior, is the strength along with their secondary of that defense. Um, I'll bring the guys back now. Uh, if I do it right. <laughs> oh, man, I tell you. All right. So, guys, any thoughts on the defensive line there? No. Nah. Oh, uh, uh, well, I was perfect. Bigger you know, got some hidden gems. What you mean by that, Cole? Was I perfect? I, I, you perfect. I, you know, I. Hickory Ridge. Got I, Malik some Pump, interior lineman now. Hickory Ridge, you know. uh, 6'4", 295. Could have put him at the D tackle spot as well. A lot of D tackles here. Um, I, I think Clawson is probably the only pure defensive end that we got on here. But yeah, yeah. I like the Clawson pick. Yeah. I like. I like. It, it's tough. It's tough. It's. The D line is tough. They all good, you know. Like I said, I told Drew I was gonna give him some love, and I'm not lying. That D line, he got some D line. Boy. <laughs> he, he got some D line. Now. Is Dixon is is Bryce Dixon the kid? I had a chance to watch a little bit of film. Is Bryce Dixon the kid that's got the size, really really big kid that kind of move him inside sometimes, kind of move him outside three and one tech. He, he, one yeah, he, he can play well. Play pretty much very well in that D line. He, he, he's a wrecking ball. He's a man child up there, man. He's a yep. man child. Up there. Hey, let's stop talking about him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 he, yeah, 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 yeah. It, it hurts. <laughs> it hurts. I gotta hug myself. It hurts. But <laughs> oh man, but I think you were sitting a lot. You know, I don't, I don't pay a lot of attention to D line other than trying to trap them. You know, I don't pay a lot no. of attention. Like no, nah, but Clausen, Clausen is the is the gem. Clausen is um is uh <laughs> he look on the side, but that boy quick and powerful, boy. I tell you that he's he's yeah he deserved right. that offer you get. Yeah. Coach Crow, where did you get an offer from, Coach? 
I think oh, UNC Charlotte. Yeah. Clawson? Oh. Yeah, he's committed to Charlotte. He's committed to Charlotte. Yeah, to Charlotte. Ooh. At you, boy. Look at you, Friday. <laughs> Check me out, boy. Got my notes. <laughs> Oh, but uh, linebacker man, I think I think you had some uh, some good picks. The AJ Stark kid from Butler uh, had a chance to go look at some look at some film on that kid. Really good kid, rangy kid. Um, can play. You know, really, I, you know, it'll be a question of where he wants to, where he can play, maybe on the next level. Uh, didn't get a lot of film on the Ronnell Garrett kid, man. Couldn't really find him. Um, so I'm, I'm I'm looking to see, you know, you know, what was the the the, the mentality behind that pick, Coach uh, Pep. Pepper, you gotta tell me a little bit about this Ronnell Garrett kid, man. I, I couldn't find any film on the kid, man. All right, so Ronnell Garrett, um, you, you, I mean, there's no shot towards you, kid. I just, I, I just couldn't find. It. No, no, you're, you're fine. Um, he's in that mode of um, kind of a hybrid. Um, he's not a, a huge kid, but the thing that impressed me was his speed from the uh, middle linebacker position. Uh, was able to. I, I, I'll call him sideline to sideline. That's what I'd say about mm-hmm. um, You know, when he had some good protection in the middle of the D-line at Independence last year, uh, so he was able to kind of run free a little bit and go go make plays. Um, and that's the thing that stuck out to me, you know, on his film. He was able to get into passing lanes, drop well in zone coverage. He was able to break up passes, had a nice interception. I believe it was against uh, Hickory Ridge, I think, on a screen pass. Uh, almost scored on that interception, so he's very athletic. Um, you know, so he, he's just a guy that makes plays, and you know, on, in this conference, and you got a, a guy that can make plays, you know, on the ball all over the field. Uh, I think he deserved to be on this preseason all conference team. Uh, Mike Park, man, I know y'all got some work to do in that linebacker court, man, so I ain't, I ain't gonna say nothing. I'm excited I'm to see the, um, the freshman that he says coming from uh, Legion Collegiate in Rock Hill uh, that he's, played for them. He's when he say Legion Collegiate, he ain't no having no problems. <laughs> <laughs> and when he said that name, I can't enunciate. Then I don't have no problems. <laughs> he, he get one of them names. You already know where he come in from. Uh, hardship, uh, hardship, one meal a day. Oh man. Yo, he come to take some heads off in him. <laughs> <laughs> you better hope y'all don't run into him in the playoffs, then. That would have No, we fought, we fought a little A, not for a big A. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Come to Bill, if you had some comments on the DBs, you have your Uh-oh. notes. Magically, when the DBs come up, you got your notes. So we can go to you and let you talk about DB. Um, Donovan Woods, East Mac. I said it on Twitter, hey, he's a dog. He's a ball player. I have nothing negative to say about the kid. We play him twice. I played him two years while I was at Providence. Um, I really enjoyed the way he played. He got great ball skills, good hips, good hands. I think he could play. He don't be a he don't be a sleeper pick from some people. Um, the freak over there, Hickory Ridge, Terrell Davis. Mm. That boy can move, man. He no, can move. Oh. Mm. He can move. He's um he's the kind of safety that you want. Um he he take a he take a whole side of the field off by himself. Amari, I think that's the kid from Mount Island, correct? That's yeah. at Myers yeah. Park now. Yeah. Yeah. Um I got to ask a couple of questions. I got to see some of his film when he, they um like when Crowell said when they played Barry. Um he's pretty good. Um not pretty good, he's good. You know, that no let me discredit the kid. Um Javon, the Rocky River kid, like <laughs> it, you can't go wrong with a Rocky River DB. <laughs> you just can't. They, <laughs> Coach Gray, y'all think I'm playing? He's probably one of the best defensive play calls in the state. He just, you know, remember what he did in Mallet Creek last year? You know, in that first half, that was impressive. And then it just opened up. If that offense start getting clicking. Rocky River is gonna be a force in this conference. Um, specialist Jake Snap. Um, it's not even fair for me to talk about that kid, you know, because I got the coach. Um, he he understands football. He's a dog. He's gonna go get it. Um, I I wish the best for him. You know, he's. I think he's a corner more so a safety, especially a corner on the next level. But like Pep said, we play him at during bot safety. We play him outside linebacker. We play him at rush in a couple times. Problems when we went to our three three five set. 
and he just makes plays. You know, he's a playmaker. Um, and then Ty Dale in my part, <sighs> he's a ball player. Um, he told he told us up last year when Promise came on down to Mars Park. Um, that was a big pickup for Old Dominion. He don't do great thing. Now this is the one thing I got to say to Pep. He should have added another DB. He told you who it was when Brian Hell was on McDougal from Butler. He's one of the best corners in this in this conference. He's he's underappreciated. I'm not saying Pep underappreciated, but you watch this kid play. He is mean. He 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 he's in the run game. He's always what we like to say in the defense in the frame. He's always in the frame, and that's rare at the cornerback position. You offensive guys, y'all know that. You blow the little cornerback out, y'all be like, we got it. But he's always in the frame. He's he he walking like he talking, and he has my respect. You know, he's he's a ball player. He's a serve our ball play, and you put him. I don't know if they're going to play snap on the defensive side. They do with the rest of what they got in that second there because it, Butler football is all about attitude, and that's a me. Butler, they might re- make me regret what I'm about to say when we go to our preseason ranking, but <laughs> I don't know. Why are you trying to create so many enemies, man? You know you got to I know, them. man. Cameron Smith, man. Shout out to Cameron Smith, man. I love that video, man. Good gracious. What I'm getting a little famous now, boy. I like that song. It was nice, nice to produce, put a nice little slide in there with, with the you know, it was a nice, it was a nice little video, man. I like I just wish I just wish they had put the oh Lord. That, like, you know, <laughs> make me do the old Lord. You know, it hurt my feeling. Nah, it didn't hurt my feeling. You know, I'm a boy. That first couple uh, of seconds of the video, you you call you called Thompson over there in Olympic and you told him to do that to me because I'm a little kid been coming at me all week. But you know, you know, it's offensive guys, man. We got to stick together, man. So I call as many offensive former offensive coordinators, offensive minded guy. I know Thompson is not necessarily an offensive guy, he's a head coach, but you know, I try to keep all these offensive minded hey, guys. Hey Thompson, just just to let you know, you are an offensive guy. That coach Joshua Crowell, who said that, um, if you DM me on Twitter, I will give you his at. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so hey, 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 hold on, man. You know, I like to request. I like to request my edits. I like to request my my edits. Now, I'm gonna say two words. I want this. I want this. I need this short clip. Uh, I'm gonna say two words. These two words are Omari Feel Yeah. Omari feel ya. And I know Billups. Billups, you, you did. You had a chance to check him out. But I had a chance. To, this kid is the real deal, man. And Myers Park. I don't know how in the world y'all got Omari to come over there. He he but, moved there like the correct way. That's he, what we want to say. He moved to the district. He moved to the area. And but, he enrolled the right way. He did the right way. That's right. But this kid is the real deal. And I can't wait to see this kid in that conference and in that schedule, so he gets a chance to show everybody else he is the real deal. He's one of those kids that quietly in the background, you know, he, you know, from some coaches around the area, from some people around the area, you know, it was a lot of talk because he played one A football and he was coming from Mountain Island. That it was some people saying some things, and Billups, you know, it to be true that they were saying some. Can he really make that transition over there? No, because we said the same thing about a private school wide receiver. Who left Davidson Day and went to Huff, and he tore the whole I met up for up. like two years. So it's, 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 it's just, it's just all like that. But I would have said this. I would have told you this. I would have gave you credit. And Mount Island had called Coach Bills at, when he was at Providence. Said, "Hey, Coach Bills, we want to prove that you ain't that bad. We want to come on down to the South Side." And you had did what you did to bear it to us. I might get credit, but now nah, y'all got some great DBs out there because you know my boy um D Rich oh. and, and coach and coach over there. Boy, I love I love y'all. Ooh, well, you're not over there no more. Yeah, I'm not over there no more. I'm retired. I'm retired. I'm not. Watch, uh, watch, uh, so, I'm, I'm, here. Googled, I, I'm gonna say that I I reached out to him and I told him that you know if we we make we could have went to a four one six. Defense and oh my goodness, have, you know, been on there because he's he's on the same level as these guys. We just 
you know, ran out of space. Um, but I agree. I mean, he's got a, a workout video on Twitter that's just amazing, uh, showing his footwork and athletic ability. And um, yeah, he's a dog. He's absolutely top two in that conference at the corner position. Well, check him out. I'm just don't say that. Not taking up from you, Pepper, because you're my guy, but I think he got it over the um Myers Park kid right now. Well, you know, I can take it this week because next week is going to be a lot worse. So, um, that's oh, I don't have my colors on that week. <laughs> <laughs> oh, next week. All right. Ooh. <laughs> so let's go to um for y'all that don't know the IMEC is next week. So yeah, it's going to be a that's going to be an interesting show. Um, yeah, I am going to be biased. <laughs> West Charlotte, West Charlotte, West Charlotte, West Charlotte, West Charlotte. <laughs> well, we do predictions. We just gonna just you know keep you in the background. No, but, don't you dare. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so wait for next week, boy. I ain't gonna lie to you. Boy. Speaking of, well, we on the Southwest now, so speaking of predictions, um, I, let's do ours for the conference. Uh, Coach Crow, I'll let you go first on this. Right. Uh, you know, kind of starting off the conference, man. Uh, you know, it kind of goes without saying. I'm, I'm going, uh, I'm going Myers Park. You know, at one, um, at two, I'm going Hickory Ridge. I'm going Hickory Ridge at two. All right, at three, I'm going Butler. At four, I'm going Independence. At three and four for me. You know, I'm putting them right there because I know they rivals. I'm going to put them right there between each other because I want the conversation to be how it's going to be. Uh, rest of the conference, man, you know, Porter Ridge, um, you know, it kind of goes without saying, you know, not saying that they're not a great program. I just think that, you know, right now, you know, the class of the conference are that top four. East Mac, you know, got a long way to go. Um, I think that they can get it going, but got a long way to go. Um, so I didn't want to necessarily to put them in a judge. But my sleeper inside the conference, though, is Rocky River. Knowing that they got all the talent over there, knowing they got the, the age and those seniors are coming along with Coach Gray, man. Uh, my sleeper inside the conference is Rocky River. But as far as for East Mac, you know, and Porter Ridge and um, and Garinger, you know, no offense, guys, you know, but, you know, I, I just need to see a little more. And uh, that's kind of how I got the conference, man. I, I didn't want to go a 6-7, 6-7-8. You know, but my sleeper in the conference is Rocky River. I got Myers part to win the conference. And then everything else, man, I'm rolling with it like that. All right. Good deal. Coach Billups, you have your hands over your face. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, baby. That's right. Porter Ridge, that's um you DM me at Coach Bill underscore DB, and I will give you Joshua Crowell information. Okay, I'm sorry about that. He has no knowledge uh what y'all do over there. I'm sorry. Um, number one, Mars Park. Number two is Hickory Ridge. Um, mm -hmm. I think Juke Juke got a line. He got two line. He got O line, D line. But two and three flip flop. Butler is number three. But it, it, that run game get going, which we all know it will. And Paris steps up. He could compete for that number two spot. Number four, even though I look, I know some great people in Independence. You know my best friends over there. Two of my best friends. I'm going Rocky River. Um, mm -hmm. the reason why I say that because the way Coach Gray was glowing today, that means he got offense this year. And he yep. got and he got offense. It's gonna be trouble for that company. Number five is I'm um, gonna be Andy. Um, number six. Well, no, I take that back. Puerto Ridge is gonna be fifth. I really, you know, they run the ball so well. They're well coached over there. Um, not knocking Indy, you know, you're just replacing a lot. You know, they lost their big playmaker. Um, Arnold, if he come back. I they want to throw the ball over there, and Van Horn's great at what he does. Um, if they get that, if they get that passing game clicking, it's gonna be ugly. You know, they they might make me eat crow, which I hope they do. Um, I think East Met could shock some people to get going. Um, I think that defense, that really talented defense alignment they had, they play him at a five, a seven, a one, and a three. I think he graduated. Um, I would say that was my sleeper pick for um Pep on the D line. Gander, I just don't know. You know, 
this all could change, but I'm just giving Gary just some fuel because you got a new coaching staff. The only reason why I'm putting him in last, um, they got a new coaching staff again. So I don't know how much you're going to keep a, what Caldwell did, but Caldwell did great things over there. Um, it's a tough time to be a new coach, you know, and bring a new staff. I'm part of a new staff, and, you know, but, you know, we're from the West Side, so we do things a little different. Uh, but um, I'm – if he gets – you know, that's my one big concern. And I want to see what he does with that. But that's how I got it. I got um, Hickory Ridge at the sleeper. I don't think – I think they don't be number two. Um, they're the most slept-on team in that conference because everybody always talk about Mars Bart and Butler. But you got to you gotta get Harrisburg some love. And ju- you're doing a wonderful job with them. Um, you the, you the juice man, the real juice man. Well said, Coach. I'm going to throw up a comment from one of our all-conference uh, players. Javon McIver says, Rocky River number one. I love that. Uh, no, Coach, I Gray, love yeah. it. Coach Gray said he, this is one of the team leaders. And um, Javon, thank you for coming on, man. I think you're very talented. Um, but I want to try to set up an interview with you, too, um, if you're still watching. So uh, – be, be on the lookout from your DM because we're going to try to highlight you and a lot of these kids on this team. Um, so, you know, I think you guys made some great points for your rankings. Um, and I can't, you know, disagree too much. Um, you know, I, I gave some thought uh, to putting Butler number one, believe it or not. And I, I'm going to explain why. Um, you know, Coach Hales – um, you know, I think he briefly mentioned it tonight. Uh, their coaching staff has gotten some big um, additions. One of those additions is Trip Stone coming over from Mallet Creek to be the uh, defense coordinator over there. Um, also, uh, DJ McFadden uh, told me he's going to be, you know, coaching over at Butler uh, this year if things, you know, work out. Um, you know, you get two guys of that caliber coming on to that staff, along with a Brian Hales, who's won, you know, so many games. They're going to be dangerous, um, you know, with a quarterback in their second year coming back. But I do have Myers Park winning the conference. Um, you know, it's just so much talent over there. But that game against Butler, if you guys remember a couple years ago, um, <laughs> there was a big game over at – Butler when Myers Park came down and played in the regular season and there was a lot going into that game and uh, Butler was super motivated and ended up winning that game and uh, surprising a lot of people. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised to see that Butler Myers Park game uh, to be a real dog fight, which may surprise a lot of people out here. Um, over there at Butler too, coach. Yep. Yeah, I see the comment here. I'm going to throw it up from uh, Coach Bird. Uh, DJ Rankin uh, also joining the staff over at Butler. So when you get that much coaching talent, um, I think that's something that you can't, you know, discredit or take lightly um, at all uh, going over there and working together as one. Um, So that being said, I do have Butler number two uh, in the league. Um, I've got Hickory Ridge third. I you know, echo the comments that you guys have about, uh, you know, Coach Wilson. Um, the one thing I, I want to also say is when we've interviewed a couple of Hickory Ridge kids and they have had glowing things to say about uh, Coach Jukes' uh, leadership and the way he, um, you know, counsels them off the field as men. And um, that's something that goes a long way, man. And, you know, I want to shout Coach out for that. Um you know, and that, that when your players come on, you know, live interviews and say stuff like that, you know, you're really reaching them and you're making a difference. And, um, you know, that's that's just awesome, Coach. So keep, you know, like the other guy said, keep doing what you're doing because you're making a huge impact. Um, I got Independence fourth. I like, um, you know, like I said, Taylor at quarterback along with Nelson um, at the running back spot, Clawson at the DN. Um, they've got a big 6'4 receiver. Um, that I just interviewed, uh, Keenan Silas, who I think is <laughs> a secret weapon that I probably shouldn't put out there, but he's <laughs> making a name for himself at some of these camps. Um, and then they've got, you know, some other kids like, you know, the Garrett kid we mentioned at the linebacker position. 
Um, you know, if it does come together and, you know, Arnold is, is able to, um, you know, throw the football, have time with that passing and running combination, the offense is deadly under coach Van Horn's leadership. Um, and they, I think they could, you know, possibly push for even the number three spot. Um, if they have the line, um, especially the defensive line, um, that go along with Clawson because if you know, you if they got to have something on the other side because teams are gonna, you know, slide his way and probably chip with a back and try to help that tackle out, you know, especially in the pass rush game. Um, I've got Rocky River after Independence. Um, I think you know, like Coach Gray said, this is he, these seniors came in with him as freshmen. Um, it's their time. Um, you know, a couple of years ago, they had, you know, a really good season uh, kind of taken away with the playoff thing that, you know, we kind of featured um, a couple of years ago about how that went down. Um, you know, and these kids were sophomores when that happened. And I think, it, you know, that's going to be something that stays in the back of their minds and motivates them this year. Uh, Porter Ridge after Rocky River, I totally respect what Porter Ridge can do. Coach Mike Hurts down there, they run that triple option from gun, and, man, they get so many little wrinkles put into that um, offense. Um, but looking at them going into this, they lost a lot from last season. That's the only reason why these guys um, are low right now. Um, they're JV team. Uh, I believe was pretty good. So they're going to have some guys, you know, backfilling um, and, and ready to go. Um, that's a team I never count out. They went to the number one seed in Grimsley last year in the playoffs and pushed them to the limit. Um, they almost won that game. Uh, and th th that guy and his staff, they coach their tails off. I'm telling you, um, it's almost like it's a version of, you know, Charlotte Catholic just with the triple option instead of the wing. Um, that's the best way I can describe Porter Ridge. They're technically sound. They fly to the football on defense. Um, and just a quick story in 2017, that, in my opinion, that was the hardest game Harding had on the way to win the state title was the second round game. Um, cause they were ready and they, they were the, the team that really, you know, shut crouch down the best all season long. And they only lost that game by seven. So they have, that's a heck of a coaching job down there consistently year in and year out. Uh, East Mech, um, they have some talented kids, like Coach Billups said. Uh, the Woods kid, top five at the VTO camp. Um, they got Lee Campbell, who's another talented DB over there. Um, and those kids, man, on the Coach Forshe, you know, they he calls them East Mech freaks, and they work. Man, I, I've seen them. I go to their practice, and, you know, they don't always have the numbers because they're small 4A and – you know, all that and the zones, you know, have really hurt that school in terms of population. But, man, there's some talent over there. There's some talent. Um, DJ Austin at the uh, receiver position, number seven. CJ Hoke, full time at quarterback this year. Uh, really good looking kid, uh, left hander. Um, they got some talent. Um, it's just, you know, are they going to have enough numbers to last four quarters against the bigger teams in this conference is the question. Um, and then Garinger, uh, yeah. Uh, you know, it's unfortunate to become a, a new head coach in this situation. Um, you know, it, it's really hard. And and like you said, Coach Bill, it's playing young guys early on. Um, it gets some experience, but then at the same time, when you're going through that, um, I've been a part of that, you know, several years ago at Harding when, you know, it was kind of going in waves and where it's kind of on a downward cycle. Uh, the payoff comes, you know, two years later usually. That's usually when you start seeing the payoff. You just got to keep them in the program, keep them invested, and, you know, you start seeing the fruits of that labor come. So it's it's a cycle over there, and it's going to have to take stability. It's going to have to take uh, someone that really, you know, gets into these kids and, you know, you know makes a difference. And, um, you know, hopefully the, the new coach over there was able to do that and, um, you know, really get something started over there um, because Coach Caldwell did do a lot for those kids, a lot for that program and the losing streak. Um, and they were at a point where they were winning, you know, a couple games and competitive in multiple games. So uh, it was a lot of work to do still, you know, over at Ganja for sustained success. So I'm going to bring everybody back um, and we're going to, you know, kind of wrap this up. Uh, any thoughts on those uh, rankings from any everyone? 
No, oh, good stuff, Josh. Good stuff. Good stuff. It's a lot of talking and no sound. Josh, you got to unmute yourself. There you go. All uh, right. Yeah, just good stuff, man. I think everybody, for the most part, you know, got, the, you know, the top four pretty much the same. Some of us got it in different positions. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I'm excited. This is a good conference, man. This is this is a good conference. This is, you know, hard-nosed Charlotte football, man. This is good. This is hard-nosed Charlotte area football. You know, I know uh, Hickory Ridge is up in uh, Harrisburg, Quarter Ridge is down the Indian Trail. But, you know, this is hard-nosed football, man. Uh, you're right. I ain't paid enough attention to Quarter Ridge, man. I'm going to go check them out with that triple option, man, see what they're doing. But, uh, yeah. It's, 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 it's going to be – a problem, man. Coach Hales, man. If if he gets if he gets that thing rolling, man. I, well, I know I got them at three, but good gracious, a lot. Well, I don't go ahead and say this. I ain't know McFadden was over there. They got McFadden. They just, got McFadden over there. Well, you just broke McFadden. breaking news, man. You should have said that before I came up here. <laughs> yeah, hey, they got McFadden over there with with Hales. Bring your popcorn. And I'm then, over bag And then I think Stone and. And the stone and ranking over there, that's pretty that's a great move right there. You know, Rankin's one of the best linebacker coaches in the um in the state. He don't get a lot of credit, but he did a lot of damage over there in Mallow Creek. Oh, you yeah. know, he, he oh, produced yeah. a lot of talent. Stone, you know, he comes from a coaching legend tree. You know, he got a legendary mm -hmm. tree and he wanna he's a pretty darn good play caller. You know, he don't get a lot of credit for what he did over there at Creek, but yeah. Stone calls some plays, man. You know, I think P got a lot of credit, but Stone did his part, you know. So that's that's pretty it's, it's a tough conference, man. That's tight. You got you got oh, you yeah. got stone, you yeah. got stone ranking McFadden paired with Hells. That's a that's a hard out. That's a hard out. And like I said, he's he's the unbalanced guy. He is the unbalanced God, and <laughs> you know it's coming. You know it's coming, and that line, whoever his own line coach is, he need a pay raise because I have never <laughs> seen one week Butler O line ever. They're mean. They're nasty. Yeah. They want you, yes. you know, pep the O line guy. You want you want that O line to be mean and physical mm -hmm. and aggressive. Mm -hmm. they, and they don't punch you in the mouth, and they don't let you know they punch you in the mouth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll tell you, you know, Coach Hales is an O line guy too. Um, you know, he's moved around a bit, but yeah, but yeah, yeah. He can, he can teach O line too, man. He can teach. He can, mm -hmm. he can teach. Well, especially on this level, you teaching unbalanced on sure. this level. Mm -hmm. That guard, when you see that guard over, you like, whoa, hold up now. You got. <laughs> you got. You got hey, 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 you got shit. He called us one time at probably my first year. Jack Wilkes, he was probably one of the best field generals ever. And yeah, yeah, you know, that's, Coach that's, Murray is right. And I, you know, I shot the practice video for the Queen City Senior Bowl, and there is some great teaching points from Coach Hales in that video. So he's got a passion for it, and um, you know, it's reflected in his team year in and year out. Like you said, Coach Wilkes. Well, as always, man, y'all know. My sleeper pick to win this conference, man, is East Forsyth. <laughs> On that note, we're going to go ahead and end the show. Uh, <laughs> I didn't say nothing that time. I was good. If this was around the horn, I'd just hit the mute on the um, that comment, but it's not. Uh, I want to thank, you know, Coach Kroll and Coach Billups and, uh, you know, Brandon and Coach McClamrock when they were on for coming on. Uh, we played a little shorthanded tonight. Some guys had some things going on and girls. Uh, Cherie had some stuff going on. Uh, but next week we've got the IMEC. Um, <laughs> we're going to do a, a, something special next week for the IMEC because they're – I'll tell you, just putting these teams together, I've gone through four different drafts <laughs> trying to figure out uh, who's going to be on the uh, IMEC preseason uh, all-conference team. Uh, we'll have some more guests on. Uh, we have some more coaches on. Um, and the crew will be back. And, um, you know, go back and rewatch that sound off because I do need some, some help on that topic I talked about. All right. So, everyone, thank you for watching Football Focus Weekly having some fun with us. Um, we'll see you next week, 7.30, live. Twitter, Petman704, on, on Facebook, Charlotte Football Insiders. Thanks for watching, guys. You have a good night.